Futures back in positive territory once again this morning, looking to extend the impressive rally that we saw yesterday. Broad-based gains right across the board yesterday for uh, U.S. stocks. We get a uh, couple of numbers out here at 8.30 this morning. Retail sales for February, first off in the U.S., 0.3% versus 04 uh, expected there. I wanted to mention this as well, Canadian inflation down here, CPI, uh, year over year, 5.5% expected. We'll uh, check back in on that. Looks like 4.8 uh, on the core number there versus 4.5. So a uh, few inflation numbers coming out uh, on this side of the border as well. But uh, overall, markets back in positive territory here looking to extend uh, the gains we saw yesterday. More signs of uh, possible movement in the right direction between Russia and Ukraine as talks continue towards a uh, possible ceasefire or uh, peace in general, which uh, everyone obviously hoping for. Uh, so the market gaining off of that. Energy markets to the downside again today on that as well. So oil back uh, to the downside. We were higher initially. We've come all the way back to trade little change. The Fed, all about the Fed today, coming up at 2 p.m. We'll uh, touch on that coming up, obviously. Uh, Chinese stocks gaining big time right across the board. Regulators in that country coming out with new measures to accommodate uh, the SEC auditing uh, stipulation that uh, they've come out with uh, to keep some of these ADRs listed in the U.S. So right across the board, every single stock basically that's gapping to the upside this morning in some sort of way uh, related to China. Uh, unless you're Starbucks, because Starbucks also higher CEO leaving, uh, Howard Schultz coming back as uh, interim CEO. We'll talk about Starbucks, JPM with an upgrade there as well. It's Wednesday, March 16th, 2022. Trader TV Live starts now. There we go. Look at, uh, yeah, some nice numbers. If you remember, 3% for the NASDAQ at the end of the day yesterday. So here comes another 1.7% leading the way right now. Uh, the Dow 1%, the S&P 1 and a quarter back to the upside ahead of the interest rate decision coming uh, again this afternoon at 2 p.m. Uh, we'll talk you through that. All positive numbers right across the board, including Bitcoin and Ethereum back to uh, the upside. Going to be a, an important day. Uh, for markets uh, in general right across the board with uh, the Fed to come this afternoon. Hey, Neil's back. Good morning, guys. Uh, we are uh, back in action here again ahead of the Fed, ahead of the uh, quarter point hike that uh, everyone uh, is uh, anticipating is going to be the case this morning. But all about these uh, Chinese ADRs today. I know, like far be it from like these names to steal the thunder out of Fed day. Like you, you come up and it's like, ah, hey, you want to be talking about the NASDAQ up one and a half percent rally yesterday. And then you got K-Web, and if you like K-Web, which is an ETF for Chinese internet names, you're going to love C-Web, which is the two times uh, we both these names up, and you can't find a gap or anywhere that uh, isn't topping the list that is related to one of these. Of course, we're going to be looking at that. Uh, I'm happy to be back. Uh, I also uh, managed, I didn't get out of jury duty, but uh, they canceled it because I guess maybe someone caught a plea deal or something like that because it got canceled. So I was able to get an extra day of some maple syrup preparations uh, up north with the family and uh, now ready locked and loaded because it's going to be a wild one. You know the drill with Fed days, right? A lot of times you find what's moving, make your plays in the morning, um, but it's like almost a new market comes uh, at two o'clock. So you want to be geared up and ready for that. It's, uh, I don't think we're going to get anything too crazy uh, unexpected. Maybe they'll talk about the timeline for the balance sheet, which we don't really know too much about. But, yeah, we know what to expect at this point, and you got to be patient off that open. Yeah, welcome. It uh, should be another big day today. I mean, we've talked about this. We talked about this last week, the rally into the Fed. A lot of people didn't believe it. Here it is. We'll see what happens at 2 p.m. But, um, yeah, yesterday we highlighted Alibaba uh, for a beautiful long. We were long 73, 74, 75. Today we're long NEO early. And, again, it's just this was the chat. And, and I saw Mike talk about this, too, in the chat today. This is why you didn't short or anything uh, BABA or anything like that. I thought it was overdone yesterday to the downside, some of these moves. And then today you get you 
you come out and you get some of this news about regulations and delisting. And that's what we put on our sticky note yesterday. It was right at the top of the sticky note. We talked about uh, the delisting talk there. So, you know, yesterday, a nice little long into, uh, we had that long down there, 73 bucks out at 80, and then it sort of just tailed off the rest of the day. But t now you're seeing this a nice little bump up. I'm looking for 87 support, something like that. I feel like we could bump down a little bit. Like I said, we're into NEO already. I just took an 18 break. It was going crazy. Um, we're going to average in a lot more shares down here if we can get it now 17, 1750. But remember, you're still up like 19%. Like, these stocks could easily fall back down. We're not trying to commit anything right now. The big plays are going to be had on open when you're going to see stocks like Softy and Facebook and Apple, all that just start to go crazy. I mean, Apple was, and I'm glad that Mr. Cross, the offer over there, did that because uh, down to 150 Apple went. I got longer in my account. I know Pratt did, did as well. Yeah, he did. Okay. He, he was waiting for 150, and I told him just to hit the ask, and he did. So um, <laughs> that was good. So he's long at like 150.50 or something. Good thing he didn't. He did that because I don't think it hit 150. So um, a nice little move to the downside for Apple, now up a little 1.6. But as the market goes, look what's happening now, though. We're starting to fade back in here. So some of that euphoria built off of you know better Ukraine talk here. Um, a nice little bump yesterday. You're seeing some profits being taken right now. It should be a wild ride for the first half hour or so, and then I'm not sure about after that. So. Let's see how it goes. Oil up one today as well. So we'll see. That's up to 97 again. But as you guys saw, I put out a video. I filled up the tank this morning, 167.9 here um, in Ontario. So that's, or in Toronto, I guess, which isn't too bad. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty good. That's on sale these days, in fact. Uh, the core retail sales, month over month, number 0.2% uh, versus 0.9. So that was a bit of a miss, guys. So uh, this move back to the downside, maybe on that uh, retail sales number for uh, February. Again, if you missed it, lots to get to. Uh, before we do, though, let's bring in Miss V. Good morning. Good morning, team. It's going to be an exciting day. I wish you all the best, a lot of profitable trades, and please like this video, and let's get it started, Brendan. Yeah, let's get it started, guys. Uh, lots to talk about as we head towards the Fed again this afternoon. I want to start off with this, though, because this made me very excited yesterday when I read it last night, in fact. Uh, yesterday, guys, in Washington, the U.S. Senate approving a bill, unanimously approving a bill uh, that would make daylight savings time forever and ever uh, starting next year. So essentially, it still has to go to the House. It still has to get signed into law by Biden. But as soon as that happens, there's no reason why it wouldn't at this point, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, get ready for daylight savings forever and ever this time next year. So it looks like we would go through one more switch uh, and then March of next year when we switch back, that would be it forever. So, I mean, I'm super happy about that. Yeah, I mean, look, look, man, it's it's ridiculous. Everyone knows that you don't need that. You don't, don't need it anymore. And if you have kids, man, they don't care. They really like that one hour. It doesn't make any. No, difference. It, just, it just hurts overall. Yeah, it's just always like it's painful. There's more accidents, all that other nonsense. People aren't as fresh. So let's just get it out of the way finally. And then a the whole thing about the U European markets closing at a different time because they do it differently. Like. What are we doing here? Let's just get it, get it all I wonder, together. But that's just the United States, obviously. Canada, well, Canada's going to fall. We have to. We don't have a choice. I mean, but, but, but will Europe, though? Will Europe, though? That's, that's the more Yeah, I don't know. We do whatever the U.S. does. Question because here. that's how we roll. We have no choice. We, ha we, ha we have to. We're too I, tied like, to their economy. I, I'm happy. I, I, th I think you're right. It, it just it puts everybody on an equal playing yeah. field. I don't know what that's going to do for crops and farmers like that. I'm just trying to bring this back to the market. I don't really think <laughs> there's no much. I don't think there's much to do here. Well, isn't um, it because, wasn't it originally because of what we told? We had heard a bunch of different. It things. was golf. Golfers it had more to do with golfers yeah, yeah, than yeah, it had yeah, to yeah, do yeah, with yeah, yeah. farmers, which I found interesting. I'd never heard that before. Um, you uh, know, uh, Schalgren here got a shutout. The first Swedish goalie ever. Um, in their debut to get a shutout, and it was for the Maple Leafs last night. So 25-year-old, brand-new goalie, uh, shutout, 4-0 win. Maple Leafs are back, baby. If you remember, guys, back in 2020, Still the awesome. Ford government here in Ontario uh, passed a law essentially saying if New York State agreed to do it and if Quebec agreed to do it, we would obviously do it as well. So no reason why uh, this wouldn't happen. So thank God. Uh, nobody, I don't think, uh, likes the uh, time changes. Uh, let's talk about uh, AMC here because, uh, I mean, the market's up, but, I mean, AMC higher this morning. Uh, we saw this news quickly faded yesterday, but I saw a few people mentioning it once again this morning. Uh, AMC buying a gold mine yesterday, essentially, or 22% of a gold mine yesterday. 
that I later read in the day has never produced even any precious metals whatsoever. So uh, there's that. Uh, AMC higher, though, this morning. Details, Brendan. Details. Look, man, you don't need to actually produce gold to be... Look, man, I don't even know what to make of that story. We talked about it yesterday. It's, it's completely insane, but... Insane is the way these markets go. There is actually a level on AM, AMC today, though. That's that's a bit of a different story. I mean, you come back and you, know, you look at a couple of, I mean, I come back and say, and look at a, look at some double bottoms, and then all of Friday's levels are right back into play. So it's, I'm not saying it's like nothing even happened, but uh, you're, right at fifth, you're right at that lower high from, from Friday where we left off last week, that $15, which would have been right in play. Like obviously, you know, the market was down a couple of days in a row, so that's not gonna be in play uh, until we get a bit of a gap up here. It's, it would be a relatively clean break. You've got some gap to 16 even uh, on AMC. Uh, I feel like if you, you can pull up this chart and then you'll see like for every one AMC, 10 different Chinese related names, which probably have a more exciting setup for you. But that's just the way the market's gonna be today. You can pick your poison, Didi, and Sean's looking at Neo, Alibaba, that K-Web, which sometimes just trading even that, there's decent volume, uh, could, be, could be the way to go. But yeah, 15 levels interesting on AMC. It just it won't be the top of my radar because 240,000 shares worth of volume. There's no shortage of volume movers this morning. Uh, unfortunately, AMC's not one of them, but that story, it's whimsical, I don't, interesting. I'm not sure the word to use. Yeah, we had, um, there was supposed to be Adam Aaron on yesterday, and I don't think he wound up showing up, so I don't know what was going on uh, with that. But uh, HYMC, yesterday we took it early, very, very light position about this time uh, at 267, believe it or not. We got a piece out there at 280, um, and then, so we got one piece out there. We averaged it back in right there at 226, then we lost on a $2 break, and then we made it all back, um, basically all of it back just flat like we didn't make any money on the stock yesterday but we waited for this 150 area in the after in the after show i guess i keep saying that but it's just in our two o'clock show uh and then we went long when it came into 150 and then we started getting it out on the way up and you guys saw that our best out was 169 uh a bunch out here 164 165 off of a 152 long so you know made it back there um because we had a key level of 150 that broke uh right there in the aftermarket but basically held so um you know i think you can go long HYMC again here. It's not Harmony, it's Highcroft Mining, that's what it is. Um, and uh, you can get long here about 150, I think is a safe play. Uh, again, just using that 150, and as I scroll down, let's see if there's any decent size here uh, at 150. I don't even see 150, so I, I think you could do that, play off the 150 today for Harmony, but again, I think it's yesterday's story. So for now, we'll just uh, wait on it and see where it goes. But Harmony right now, I think it's gonna be a moot point. It's only 4 million shares, uh, and yesterday at this time, I think it was 20 or 30. So let's wait on it, but HYMC is a nothing. And then AMC, I actually looked at it today. There is a chance for this to rally a little bit today uh, off of yesterday. Look at that nice little bump that we had from 1350 all the way to 1450 yesterday at close. Beautiful move upside for AMC, you know, supporting that 13 and a half. And that's, you know, that's been a name or a level here in the last couple days uh, that's held. So it's actually just two days. Yesterday uh, and the day before held that 13, 1350. So a little bit of a dip down in AMC and we're buying. All right, let's bring in uh, Jeff Mendel, VP OTC Markets. We missed Jeff yesterday, uh, had a prior engagement, but uh, he's back with us this morning. Happy to have Jeff as always. Uh, we'll touch on a, a few things here uh, this morning, Jeff. There's obviously this whole angle of, you know, foreign listed stocks, ADRs uh, over in China, first of all, and then in Europe, we can touch on a little bit as well. But lots of things moving on more, you know, global headlines this morning. But one of the places that we can get access to some of these uh, listings is OTC Markets. Great to see you. Yeah, thank you, Brendan. Thank you for the great intro, as always. And so, yeah, so the, the uh, China play is in effect over in OTC Markets and uh, and on OTCX this morning as well, too. So I guess let's start off with uh, Luck and Coffee, LKNCY. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with 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 the name, and even even though it, uh, even uh, after it uh, moved away from Matt Nasdaq, uh, so today it's actually trading up, uh, closed at about uh, six dollars and forty five cents, and it's trading uh, all the way up around eight fifty this morning with a tight spread on OTCX. Uh, then we're going to move over to uh, Tencent, T 
C-E-H-Y, which uh, once again, I think you guys are all familiar with trading. <laughs> Yesterday, it closed below $40. Now, I don't know if you remember this, but uh, it was trading up above $90. I think it may, maybe $92, $95, somewhere in that range, uh, not too long ago. And so to be trading under forty dollars, such a big name, um, you know. So this morning it's jumped up. Uh, it's it's trading in around uh, forty-seven dollars. I've seen uh, a few prints above that as well. Uh, once again, tight spread on OTCX. Uh, so that's another one to look out or look at. Uh, and then one more name that uh, you know, honestly, I don't think we ever really bring up too much. I'm gonna bring it up real quick. J T K Y W. Not really. Uh, too sure it's uh, just eat takeaway, but uh, that has a decent amount of volume uh, for, for the morning and it's trading up about 25 cents. I'm not really sure what's going on with that one, but other names to look at also this morning too uh, outside of China is uh, Nintendo, Volkswagen, you know, kind of along the same lines that you were uh, you were referencing, uh, Brendan. Yeah, so moves in the right direction, I guess, uh, on the regulatory side for some of these uh, Chinese listings. Obviously, the uh, the one benefit here, Jeff, and it's, we mention this all the time, but the one benefit is uh, you you can get an idea of where these might start trading a little bit earlier on uh, in the pre market than uh, than the big boards. Uh, in the sense that, I mean, just to take away a great example, primary listing over in the UK. I did see that this morning, doing all kinds of volume. Uh, over in the UK. So if you want access to that in the US, uh, OTC market's a great place for that. Uh, we also mention all the time uh, cryptocurrencies uh, with uh, Jeff uh, back to the upside this morning in a big way, along with uh, equities here on, you know, maybe some positive momentum overall as far as geopolitical concerns are, uh, are concerned. Yeah, uh, you know, the GBTC, uh, the, the uh, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, ETHE, the Grayscale Ethereum Trust, and other names that are, that are also very liquid this morning and in a, in a, in a, in a tight spread uh, on, on OTCX as well, too. Just looking down the list. Uh, yeah, th those, are, those, are the, those are the only two that are really trading this morning as far as uh, the crypto products. But uh, yeah, you know, two other great names to, to look at trading up a little bit uh, in the pre-market today. Uh, always, uh, always great information. Jeff Mendel, VP OTC Markets, ahead of the Federal Reserve and uh, the first interest rate hike coming this afternoon uh, since 2018. Pretty crazy uh, to think about that. Uh, we appreciate your time as always, Jeff. Thanks, Brendan. Have a great day. Uh, a few names there, guys, for you if you are uh, interested in trading the OTC markets. Uh, I mean, we, we mentioned a few from time to time. Tencent came up earlier in the week, if you remember, on some money laundering uh, headlines. So it had a huge move back to the downside, but uh, here we are, the whole market higher today. Load every time I hit it. Yeah, look, I like that Tencent call. We've talked about that Tencent music. They're huge into everything. They have, um, what is it? Uh, not WePay. Uh, WeChat, but there's also a pay uh, thing with that as well. Uh, but yeah, Tencent, just a monster name. And here's the daily chart for Tencent. It's been pretty disastrous uh, for them, obviously. I mean, we can look at a lot of names. Baba, I mean, I love, I've been talking Nintendo for a while. Uh, N-T-D-O-Y, a Japanese name, uh, of course. So a little bit outside of what to expect and again, I don't know, our charts are a little bit finicky here uh, in the morning, but I do like Nintendo. Uh, here it is coming off of, uh, you know, not, this is a one day. So that this is what I mean about the Chinese names. Nintendo is not, right? It's, it's nicely up here. It's held greatly. If you look at all these other names, um, you know, in the tech space, like any of the video game makers, I guess Sony's been doing really well. They had obviously the PS5 and a few uh, releases come through for them as well. But Nintendo's held up real well here, man. You get a break of 65 on Nintendo. Nintendo, which might happen today, which is right here, then that probably gets back up to the upside. I know they released, I mean, whatever. I'm not going to talk about products. They have a new Switch product out there, uh, but whatever. I, it, that, that's not a big thing. Nintendo's a solid company. We just had Mario Day, March 10th there, um, where we had that uh, little funny clip of ours about uh, Brendan not playing Mario Kart, if you remember. Which is crazy. Um, so he will not be buying any Nintendo, but I think that's a good name, and I do like Tencent here as well. Oh, won't he though? But uh, look, and the, the other thing to keep in mind of some of these, uh, some of these names in the OTC, right, is like something trades over there, in Japan, maybe like Just Eat, which trades in Amsterdam. Well, guess what? When those markets are closed, you can still sort of trade uh, over here in U.S. hours. And a lot of times, when there's news released or earnings or something along those lines, uh, you might get a, a reaction while you're still open here uh, trading the OTC. Ooh, some interesting names on that board that I can kind of barely see uh, upgrades and downgrades, Brendan. Uh, yeah, big names on the board today. Here we go. 
Uh, Micron top of the list, uh, it's worth mentioning NVIDIA also with a, an upgrade today. Uh, Wells Fargo, Bernstein on Micron here. Uh, Magna on the board today. There's Starbucks, we'll talk about that coming up. Adobe, Nike, SoFi, and P&G on the downside. Yeah, man, like Procter and some of these, like Procter, Pepsi, some of these names like that, that can run into trouble if you get like a bit of an economic downturn, which had been so well the last you know, few, few uh, months or so. Uh, starting to go to the other way, but Micron's an interesting one, man. Uh, like the chip strength, we're probably going to be talking, well, but not probably, we're going to be talking about some of the chip makers uh, here today. And Micron, you know, it, it's, it's held up a few of these days pretty well. I'm just sort of pulling back the daily charts so you can see. Like it had this dip that not a lot of the, not a lot of these names had, you know, this support level down around this October, and you just managed to bounce off it. You're coming right back over uh, to what is you saw that 200 period uh, looming large and this $80 range from last week, which could be pretty big. Uh, but I'm shooting 73, 74 here. Just looking at that little V-shaped bottom, where was support last week? You know, can you make it again? It's because of the upgrade. You'll see it lead the chip makers a little bit here, up that 4%. And AMD's like 2 I think NVIDIA's uh, a little bit more than that themselves. But, you know, Micron, I love the name. Definitely want to be on my radar today if you can get down to that 73, 74. I look at this, I look at some of what's going on with the market pulling back here a little bit. I don't wonder if there's going to be a little bit of a dip. Uh, you know, you get these big gaps up, and uh, maybe we'll get a little bit of a dip at the open. Some of those... Some of those Chinese names are just like the gap up is huge, and then you're running right to like a to resistance levels from last week, and it just feels you know 20, 30 percent, and some of those feels a heck of a lot. And I should address Sonnet because I'm already in this one. Uh, Sonnet made a couple of moves to the upside. It got to 60 cents on the daily chart. 68 was a much more interesting level, but it popped up. It consolidated lower. It then broke down at 52. So I've essentially been shorting off that level first at 50s and then, you know, got an average of 51 and change in front of that 52. Been scalping it out every couple of pennies, uh, but just another gap up play. This is not related to energy or, or China in any stretch. It's actually on our uh, uh, watch list. It is a biopharma company. So, uh, yeah, there is a stock that's gapped up that has nothing to do with China. Um, I was just looking here. I, I'm trying to uh, buy some Magna here, I think. Um, so we got out of Magna, if you remember. I don't think Goldman's here this early uh, in the morning, but we were, we were a buyer. And this is it here, uh, MGA. And again, uh, EV parts. We have Randy right here. Maybe we can have Randy on the show uh, at some point, maybe this afternoon if, he, if he's available, just to maybe talk about Magna and, and um, what's going on with them. Because this is a big, huge drop from 75 down to 60. And then today they get the upgrade. It's 3% dividend. Obviously, there's resource questions in Russia. Um, you know, that's going to be a problem getting getting parts through, supply chain, so on and so forth. But as far as an EV play, I was under the impression that Magna was a solid one um, due to their deals with a lot of these companies. So for me, this kind of a drop down with a 2.9% dividend um, looks pretty good. And just for the Toronto home viewers outside, uh, out there right now, which I'm, I'm hoping there's lots of you, shout out to everybody here um, in Canada. But uh, Magna, we, we were in this name and then they warned, and we missed that step. Oh, come on. Uh, yeah, that's right. Now it's not going to, okay. Sometimes, I, I just want a trick here for anyone on day trade the world. Like, it doesn't load, and then, like, it stops, you just hit it again, and then it refreshes. See? And then it refreshes. So, like, you, you hit it a couple times when it comes through. But I remember here when we got out, they warned somewhere, and, and I forget where it was. I think it must have been in September or October. They warned here, and we got out early um, on that, and then it went to back to the upside, uh, creating you know some FOMO for us. Uh, but now it's dropped back down in. So we got out, like we got in and out at 100, basically. I think we lost 2 or $3 uh, on it, still holding a small piece. And that's why I want to average into Magna. I know we're spending a lot of time on Magna here, and I don't want to. It's not a, it's not a big, huge name but that is the name that I like uh, out of all of that list I do like Nike obviously with some of the China worries coming through I think that downgrade needs to be bought as well I, I'm, but again I'm a shareholder in Nike we miss our Neo bid down here we were waiting at 60 I believe it was 60 let me just double check I oh, know we were waiting at 65 it only got as low as 75 or 72 there so now Neo back on the march that was a bid right there we should have put our bid at 75 so we're going to switch it right now put it to 80 it didn't make a little shelf there at 73 so we like neo i should i should be longer down here but unfortunately we didn't get the reload so let's wait to see what happens off the open and then quickly before we go back to brendan we have tons of stuff on our watch list today so we got to get to this but i just want to show everybody it's a um china 
kind of day here. Um, Didi, go to Neo, Baba, Tencent. We just talked about Tencent right there. There's Tencent Music. Um, there's XPEV on, on the board as well, uh, as you see. So there's lots of stuff happening here uh, on the Chinese side, and there's reasons why, Brendan. Yeah, big reasons. We'll, uh, we'll get into it here in a second, guys. A couple other things of uh, note, noteworthy anyways. Lots going on this morning, but uh, Spotify, we saw SoFi on the downgrade side of the board this morning, but uh, Spotify taking a uh, page out of the SoFi playbook. Not a not a stadium sponsorship, but a jersey sponsorship with uh, FC Barcelona for Spotify. And yeah, crypto stocks. Few people still uh, touching on on these this morning as well. Uh, they're all higher along with BTC today. Like I, I mean, I just hit that bubble pop there because honestly, like SoFi, come on, man. Um, I, I get it. It's a, it's a marketing kind of world, and uh, we need to respect that. But like they're spending hundreds of millions of dollars on all of this. And I mean, I, I just, you know, they're spending your money, like shareholder money, like my money too, uh, on, come on, now, now, now nothing's loading, oh God. Um, okay, so I don't have the chart up, but yesterday, SoFi, um, you can see what it did yesterday. We have this bottom, we, you know, we traded it yesterday, long, 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 or sorry, short into here, uh, bought it back, hit it back down. This was actually two days ago, then short again. And then yesterday, we actually weren't able to get in, but we were looking at these exact same levels, 780, 790. So I think that if they can come back into that, is reasonable, you're coming right into it right now. Um, if the market does fall down here, I, I don't mind a SoFi bid down to 780 or so, but you know that's that's going to be one that's dependent on the market. If the market flushes, trust me, I'm going to be long. I'm already. You see my bids right now. I'm I'm littered all over. AMD bid, Baba bid, Microsoft bid, Neo bid, Nvidia bid. So we'll put a bid on SoFi if if we get anything down here 780, 785, something like that. Uh, I think it's worth a buy. But I, I don't I don't look at that news as a good sign, man. Uh, I don't know if my if my daily's loaded. Yet. I know yours isn't, Neil. It doesn't I'm, I'm like trying yet, to pull up Spotify. Uh, right. not, yeah, nothing's loading right now on our chart side of things. Maybe, maybe we are having an issue. Uh, but anyways, SoFi, it's kind of the best of the worst, if that makes any sense. It's a name that I like. I think there is upside to SoFi here. But again, like I, 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 making calls on stocks that are like this quality just aren't good right now. We talked about Apple. I mean, Pratt bought it the other day, 150.50. It's 158 today, right? So there's there's calls on good quality names that you can make right now. I don't know where the bottom's going to be on a name like SoFi. I'm hearing five. I'm hearing six. So I don't know. If, if for a day trade, sure, let's hit this long around 780. But other than that, I. I you know, I'm done kind of recommending some of these names as they keep going to the downside. I think you got to hold them for six to eight months anyways. So if that's going to be the play, then average down, man. Dollar cost average on these plays is really the only way to go. Yeah, it's not like Spot makes any money, so they might as well throw it at some a jersey, I guess. I don't know. Uh, I was going to pull up the Daily Chart. Oh, it was chart, Spotify with the jersey? We're talking it was Spot SoFi. It was Spotify, right? Oh, it was Sp I was just comparing was comparing it to SoFi. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah, I have the, the jersey's same. cheaper than the stadium. I have the same thoughts. Sponsorship. I thought it was SoFi with the jersey. But I mean, look, Spotify hasn't really done any volume here pre-market. Uh, obviously, a lot of things, you know, are, are gapping up. So the three percent on light volume. I don't know if that moves the needle here today. You can look at a 120 if you're interested. If it were to dip down, I don't think it's going to be much of a much ado about anything uh, for Spotify. Uh, unfortunately, um, there's definitely a bigger fish to, fish to fry in terms of uh, available names for us to trade here today. Uh, definitely. Uh, interesting story, though, uh, overall. Uh, as we said, uh, Bitcoin uh, on, on the way back to the upside as well. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, Starbucks here, obviously, a couple of separate uh, Starbucks-related stories. But uh, before we bring in Arun, guys, just a note on Fed Day in general, if anyone's joining for the first time maybe on a Fed Day. Again, 2018 was the last time we had an interest rate hike. Uh, so first Fed Day, typically, where we get an interest rate hike, uh, you know, thoughts on the overall market here, as we said, might be a little bit quiet once we get the uh, initial moves out of the way off the open going into 2 p.m. I kind of feel a lot of times like what I what I hope to happen on any kind of Fed announcement or like big news event is just like, please do that whipsaw action where you get an obvious level. And when I say obvious, I'm just going to point at like 13.5, right? Just, you know, this is a level right here on the NASDAQ futures. And maybe you get an opportunity where, okay, the initial move, you have that big spike, it goes right into it goes right into a support level, and then you bounce off that. Or in the other direction, like maybe 
because think, think of it here. Sell the news in this case would mean the market would rally in some ways, right? Uh, so if, imagine we spiked, got to like a 13.8, and then pulled right back into where we were before, and then you just simply take like a long right in front of that level. If the initial move was down, maybe you take a short right in front of the previous level that it came from, and then just look to play the rubber band play in the actual range of the first candle that, that it had. Now I'm really just talking about when the announcement comes at 2. Keep in mind at 2.30 you still have... Uh, all of the comments and uh, all, all the comments are going to come after where you might get a little bit more color as to what is going to happen. But I'm not necessarily anticipating that you're going to have, you know, monster breaks of the ranges um, today on the, on the market until you get to the Fed. I think it's, it'll be a little uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I know. It's, you saw it now. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's the next contract. Of course, I wasn't here Monday same to change top, it. But, but it's going to be the same top. I'm just sort of pointing it out in the charts. I like that fade trade. Like, it comes out, you get a spike. You come back to that same level and take, this, take it the second time that it bounces off instead of trying to catch it at 2 o'clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got it. Um, we, we got that. So, yeah, I, I made the same mistake on Monday. I was like, oh, I was looking at the wrong futures contract. Uh, and we fixed it. But we have a new position alert right now. Um, someone said, Sean, why are you not in Microsoft? And if I can't be uh, the people's trader, if I don't listen to the people, right? Uh, but, uh, yeah, we hit the keys ourselves here and make our own decisions. So, um, But, yeah, look, I wrote down on the sticky note that we were looking for uh, Microsoft to come through here uh, at 288.50. Uh, oh, there's that. Uh, don't, don't need that one. That's my little rant today at the at the um, pumps but here we go um, here's Microsoft so strong yesterday we're looking long buy any dips into 288 so uh, we'll start we'll start the fun right now 288.57 this is what I'm talking about Microsoft yesterday was a real fun ride man we traded it a lot we actually first went long at 279 yesterday uh, the close of Microsoft was 287 so it was a big day yesterday here it comes right in um, def not really defending anything, man. You, and, I, and I put this out to whoever mentioned that on the chat. Uh, I just took the long. I saw that Microsoft faded in here. I wrote down 288. I like that level. Um, and again, here's 287 yesterday. You know, the market's fading in. So I'm not sure if it's going to be a long kind of day, but I feel like we should test the longs. Um, it may be a long at some point, but we still have, obviously, um, the president right now of Ukraine, Zelensky, is talking right now to Congress. So that could definitely have some effect on what's happening here in the market. So um, I'm going to be a little cautious on some of these dip buys right now. There's a lot happening and there's still 25 minutes till the open. Yeah, keeping uh, my eye on that as well. I, I don't think they've actually started yet uh, at Congress, but he is scheduled to. Uh, let's bring in uh, Arun and get a check of the overall market. The uh, rally that we saw yesterday. I mean, we sat here uh, yesterday afternoon, Arun, and saw this uh, impressive buying that was going on. Uh, here we go again, back to the upside ahead of the Fed. I want to uh, touch a little bit on what's to come at 2 p.m. as well. Uh, you're one of the guys that was around here the last time we got an interest rate hike on a Fed day back in 2018. What can we expect today? All right, so a couple of things. Overnight, we just carried forward what happened yesterday, which was a straight buy side move. We kind of went sideways and then we extended the buy side, blowing up any resistance levels. Uh, in the way. So we had 42.65 that held in the afternoon for a little bit and then overnight it's gone. We now have no, no, new, no new levels, right? We're, we're essentially going to have to let this market trade out and develop some new levels. So it's going to be a wait and see approach in terms of what resistance levels are, what support levels are. Everything's going to have to be declared today and then we get it to two o'clock. Now at two o'clock, you're going to have a couple things. At two o'clock, you're going to have that release, right? It's going to be the interest rate change and it's going to be uh, any sort of adjustments that they have made. And after that statement, you're going to have the Q&A at 2.30. So with the 2 o'clock move, it's because it's a written statement, it's already been pushed out uh, or is pushed out right uh, then and there. It's just been parsed immediately through uh, by the programs. And that's what you have to look out for is because when the programs parse through it, it's they're parsing much faster than we can actually read it, right? So it's going to be a lot of back and forth action. There's going to be move in one direction that may come right back, go in the opposite direction. There's going to be a lot of whipsaw action until we actually get a solid enough read, at which point people that have read through it have gotten an understanding of what's going on. And then you're going to get a push in one direction, right? So that's pretty much how two o'clock into 210 would go. A lot of back and forth while the programs do their thing. And then once people have read through it a few minutes in, then you get the move from the actual traders that want to be involved and they feel like this is a good thing, this is a bad thing, whatever. But that's the, what happens right off the bat. And then at 2.30, the Q&A session with uh, Fed Chair Powell is going to be 
the thing that either extends that move or completely reverses it. Because when you have the Fed chair now talking and explaining things and not just the statement, everyone's looking at every single word that's coming out of his mouth, every single possibility of future changes, future adjustments. And that's what it's all about. Stock market's about the future value. In this case, what are they going to do in the future regarding pace of changes and any other rate changes or accelerated moves that they may make or may not make, right? And that's what happens at 2, uh, 2.30 and onwards. So this market is going to make some, uh, do, do some volatility action around 2 o'clock from a statement. And then at 2.30, when the Fed chair talks, everyone's going to be hanging on each and every word to figure out what that means for future adjustments and rate changes. And that's what you would expect as we go into the close. Uh, from 2.30 onwards, it doesn't mean right at 2.30 it's going to you know, make a U-turn or something. It just means that that's when he starts talking, that's when people start asking questions. And from there on out, until he's done, is pretty much just be very, very careful because all it takes is a couple suggestions or a couple words pointing in a different direction, and this market will go with what has been set. So just be aware, 2 o'clock and then 2.30 onwards, and then pretty much until the close, you just got to be very, very careful being aware that someone is talking, someone very important is talking that could actually make a U-turn in this market very, very quickly. Great stuff. Thanks, Arun. Yeah, going to be an important day for the uh, overall market and obviously uh, stocks in individually going forward here. Uh, worth noting, Zelensky just now starting to uh, speak to uh, Congress, it would appear. So heads up on the uh, futures. Uh, let's get into everything else we need to be aware of uh, this morning. Going towards the open, guys, that's the link to the watch list we send out every single morning for you. Absolutely free. All you need is uh, your email address and you can have access to that. Ms. V will have that link for you. Uh, in the chat, let's talk about these uh, Chinese stocks. I lost my, oh, here we go. Uh, let's talk about these Chinese stocks, uh, U.S. regulators and uh, lawmakers coming out uh, this morning with uh, brand new measures to help support uh, the listings remaining, uh, ADRs remaining on U.S. Uh, exchanges. So both the securities regulators and the government uh, putting some more effort towards uh, positivity here, guys. That was the headline this morning. Yeah, and uh, what an what a, I mean, what a gap up you're going to end up getting. So, like I said, it was it was almost as if nothing happened from last week when some of these some of these prices like you, you sit out and, and miss. I sit out and miss eighteen dollars to the downside in Alibaba, and we're right back to ninety. So you look at this level. It's Thursday support is at ninety one essentially. Friday's afternoon high was ninety one. Uh, pre market low here is ninety one. That's a pretty key price. Ninety five and one hundred both stand out as well. Um, but if we can't hold 91, I, I just feel like the, the chance to even catch this gap, it's just such a gigantic one. Like, there's no way I'm sitting out a 91 short on Alibaba. But I, I would say this. I talked, mentioned this K-Web. If you're looking at the uh, – if you're just looking – to trade the overall move, KWeb's biggest two holdings are Alibaba and Tencent, and then I forget some of the other ones by order, but uh, you can always look, at, uh, look it up. But it's just the Chinese uh, uh, tech internet ETF, and it's up 21%. I know there's names that are more or less than this, but if you're looking for something that'll express the move, the chart's going to look basically the same. I mean, if I was saying that same setup in, in Baba, I was looking at KWeb, I'd be talking about 26.50 uh, to the short side, like as a, as a bit of a breakdown style trade. And then you might put the previous pre-market high at 27, you know, that kind of that kind of a setup. And if it were to break back out, it's got resistance at 30 bucks. So, you know, you definitely should be watching these today. Um, Didi's in there as well, but Didi, I love Didi as a fade to three because that's where it came from when it really flushed last week. It's a little bit far away from that level, so I liked Alibaba a little bit better if I was going to try that retracement trade. And if there's somewhere to pick, uh, pick any of these ones up, uh, just going specifically into Didi, like if it gets down to $2, that's just a very, very interesting level because that's the top of the nice little consolidation it had for two days. So, I mean, Didi goes to $2. Now, I'd love to see that on the bid and then take a crack at it. But Bob is the one I'm looking at. Yeah, we're already, I mean, we're looking at Alibaba, uh, of course, every day, but um, today's going to be a special one, probably. Uh, all right, we're into Neo right now, but the thing is, you see the market, what's happening right now. We see Zelensky is speaking, um, and if he says anything, I'm, I'm sure it'll hit the wires and Brendan will get it. Uh, but I'm not expecting anything dramatic. I mean, he's already spoken to the Canadian government, lots of different uh, governments, so I, I'm not surprised what, what he's going to say. Everybody knows. Um, but, okay, so I'm going to be trying, I will be buying uh, some low 17s here. We stepped in a little too early, obviously, on Neil, but we don't, 
you know, the position that we have right now is a small one. We talked about that in the pre-market, um, and we don't want to go into too large of a position. But if we can get some 17 bids, that's great. And then just to show you what, what, where we're going to be giving it up, 16. So if Neil comes all the way back, this is a 20-minute chart. Yesterday, a big move to the downside, obviously, um, you know, to start the day, and then a monster rally up, right? And so that was stopped here. It was a bottom of 13, top of 15.50 or so. So, you know, does it have a move in it? Yes, it does. But can it fall? Yes, it can. So, you know, expecting a little bit of a move down here to 16 bucks on Neo off the open. Remember what we talk about all the time, even though these are big buy imbalances, and here's Neo for 1.15 million shares. Like, that's, that's part of what's keeping it up right now. So, like, if there were, was not these buy imbalances, were not these buy imbalances uh, present right now, then we would be going to the downside, right? And so you got to watch out for those. They'll, they will pair off right off the open. And when they pair off, remember, that means there's 1.16 million shares to buy. Someone's going to have to make a sell order, put a sell order in to pair that off. And then if that, you know, starts more selling into the name, then we maybe we do see a bid in the those mid 16s but that's you know I do have an, an order waiting for that uh, to happen so that's kind of what we're waiting for a dip down in for for Neo to buy but we are on the bid here 1730 I believe 1720 uh, to get it to get like almost a full position um, and then we'll be averaged into that I mean not a full position but we'll be averaging into that down to 16 in case there's a problem um, Alibaba I just canceled some bids uh, you know it's just there's been a lot of traders on Alibaba, and I feel like coming into today, just like we were yesterday, man, we bought these bottoms, 73, 74, 75, and I know there's a lot of people on the chat saying the same thing too. I bought the bottoms, and, and, and I'm holding, right? Well, if you wake up today to 20%, I'm wondering if you take some of that. So, you know, watch out for this 91, like Neil mentioned, that breaking to the downside. I, I have a bid at 87, and the reason why, again, it's, it, it's nothing that much, but it's just right here. This is the drop on the 11th. $87 is where we close. So I feel like if we can drop down into that, that could be a good sign. But hey, I want to be long Alibaba. I want to be long Neo. I want to be long all of the Chinese names. It's just a matter of at what price. Yeah, the market continuing to slide here, bringing some of these back to the downside. Bit of a risk off move right now. Uh, no headlines yet coming out of this uh, speech from Zelensky, but uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, we'll go on to chip stocks, big time strength right across the board yay, uh, late yesterday. And then again, coming into uh, pre-market moves here this morning, both Micron and NVIDIA with fresh upgrades here and price target increases. But I mean, the entire group looking pretty good here so far. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, the, the market's up a couple of points here. I mean, the ES is less than 1%. The chip's again leading the way. I think a lot of times that's just been the way uh, that they've gone. I like, I like Micron in a, few, in a few ways today. Uh, one of them is going to be if we do get a big, big rollover flush and we can't hold the pre-market lows, you can see that 76 level. Uh, then I'm just simply watching that channel from last week. That's Friday afternoon, uh, which was also weekly support down around 74. And that's where the buy zone uh, would be for me. If we, if we put that failed break in, so take out 76 at the open, it's sort of the reverse of what I would want to do on like a Lucid. Um, you know, it's a failed break of the high, and then you reverse into it. You get that short position when it tries to take a pre-market high. I think the same same thing plays for me in Micron, where I'll go to the one minute so you can see a little bit better here. The same thing would also play for me, where you attempt to break this support down here at 76, don't get very far, and then you're snapping back, uh, and then maybe grabbing a 76 half long uh, as it tries to fake you or fake you out to the downside. I much prefer that long in a chip name uh, if I had to. You mentioned NVIDIA. Uh, I know AMD is the one that a lot of people are looking at, and it's got a very similar setup as well. Where you put in a pre-market low, you could get that fake to the downside uh, and then a bit of a rally there. I like I just happen to like Micron a little bit better when I watch that setup. Uh, I also, it also has that nice clean 74. The equivalent level on AMD would be the 110. You know, you get down to there, and that's, that's the obvious resistance from last week that you would think would turn into support. Uh, it, to me, it's unlikely that you get too big of a monster move in one direction that only goes one way on a Fed day before the Fed announcement. So you look at those key levels, and if you see them, I would expect people to come in, like any shorters, maybe taking, taking some off the table, uh, some longs wanting to step in as well. But you know, Micron, first look will be if it can hold that pre-market low, uh, right at 9.30, I want that after 9.30, and then for sure in front of 74, uh, AMD 110 is just as good.
Yeah, we wrote down, yeah, those are, yeah, the exact levels. AMD 110 we like, and then here for NVIDIA, this 232, we've bounced off there. Uh, well, we didn't really bounce off there, but there was some resistance. We've taken that clean out right now. So I feel like we might test some of these tops again. So 230, 232 is what we're looking at at NVIDIA. So I already have a bid in for 232. And like, you know, when we talk about some of these prices, even that AMD 110, it's like that could come in. Oh, now my chart won't load on the 20 minute. Let's see. That 110 could come in just as fast fast as you know 108 could come through uh, if this market crashes just watch out off the open you could get some of these positions so get ready to manage them is all that I'm saying like I'm on the bid everywhere right now I'm bidding AMD uh, actually I'm bidding AMD 109.50 um, you know I guess that bottom yesterday was 109 maybe I have to bump that up a little bit uh, so we'll see if that can come in but yeah this 110 let's bid a little bit ahead of 110 as well so 109.50 110 but just watch geopolitical events happening right behind us uh, on the screen so you know there's some talk about Congress he's asking for planes now um, you know wants a business to be out of Russia this and that like I don't know the sanctions that can be put on but just watch out I feel like a lot of these bids that I'm waiting for could come in pretty fast including both AMD and Nvidia Hey guys, welcome everyone who just joined us. I remind you, please like this video early as it's going to be a very busy day. And also, thank you so much, D Queen, for sending us multiple super chats and have a wonderful day. Uh, back to Brandon. Uh, okay, let's go on to uh, oil. Uh, wild swings continue uh, for oil now up 2%. Uh, when I sat down this morning, we were basically dead flat. Uh, came all the way back to uh, 95 early on this morning, but uh, nice move back higher. Uh, clearing some of these levels from uh, yesterday uh, for crude, guys. So uh, oil stocks definitely going to be on watch. Yeah, I mean, some of the play, of course, is it's not this is not just about the, the conflict. It's it's also about what's going on in China, right, with lockdowns and demand possibly being an issue. So, you know, that pullback is exacerbated, I suppose, by that second effect. Um, I'm going right back to CVX because that's what that's what made sense to me. Chevron made some more sense to me uh, last week. So, you know, those even levels were pretty good. Uh, I'm, I don't love the 160 as much as I love 165. Again, just previous support maybe turning into a resistance level if there's any kind of a spike into 165. I just feel like it's a bit of a fade uh, for me on Chevron if it can get to that price range. And you got to watch those oil futures pretty closely when you're trading, uh, when you're trading any of these names. But I feel like Chevron, I want like that double confirmation. I don't just want it to get to that level, but I want to make sure there's a resistance point uh, on my oil futures, uh, oil futures chart as well before I get in because you know that's been a pretty much a, a golden trade for me. But I'm just looking uh, to fade. Uh, 165. If I see 150, that'd be a different story uh, for the longs on Chevron. But that's the one I'm going to be watching today. Uh, that sonnet has a bit of a. I guess going to come back to SONN because I'm in it for a quick second here. Uh, got a bit of a buyer that was forming, that has been forming at that 48 level. Looks like it's going to get challenged right now again. I should be taking some out here, but you know, if it doesn't break this, I think it's got every chance maybe take out that 52 and then retest that 60. So this close to the open, I'd probably stop it out here at 52 and a half, 53, if we can't get through this 48 buyer and then head down to the low 40s. You know, again, I'm tired of doing this, but I'm going to do it again. Like I'm bidding 288.50 on Microsoft that stops at 55 um, and now rips up to 289.75. So just noticing that the Microsoft trade is now back into the money on this now. Uh, we are long at 289.57. Uh, we could take it out at 70 right now. We're not doing that. I think we at least go to VWAP, which is 291. Man, that really sucks. I wish I, I didn't even see this happening. Like I'm just sitting here because I don't have enough shares for it to really be affecting my net too much. But damn. That would have been good. I should have I should have noticed that and punched that down there. But I like Microsoft at 288.50. I love Chevron. I got to get into some of this. Um, I don't own any Chevron, but when you come back in and you look at the daily chart, uh, or actually, I mean this is fine too. Uh, the 20-minute chart because this should load if it does. I like this like 156 area. I mean we're going to come into here. Uh, oil had a monster run. We already know that Chevron has a big buyback to it. Uh, we'll see what they do after Fed today. I mean as long as. Uh, I think oil is pretty isolated from the Fed today because we know it's going to be a 0.25. I, I feel like that's baked into pretty much everything right now. It is more about the talk. We'll see if there is some energy talk from Powell. Uh, if there is, then you are going to see Chevron and, and just the price of oil move. You're already up that 2% right now, um, and the market's trying to bounce off some of these bottoms. So I like Chevron down here, and, and I think, yeah, between 150 and 154, something like that, it's a decent buy, man. So I. 
you know, will like Chevron. It's had a monster run, but I don't think oil's done. I mean, we're not going to be running out of oil anytime soon or using EVs as much as I think people think. Uh, right now, it's 2% of the drive, uh, our EV name. So I, I feel like oil manufacturing, everything, it's strong. We're, we, I feel like we may have some problems with China as well politically. Uh, if we don't already, uh, that's going to be affecting the energy markets. Then who knows what Russia eventually is going to do. So we'll, we'll wait to see here. But I like CVX, not as a day trade, but as an investment thumbs up. All right, let's go on to uh, Tesla. We talked about the second price hike in a week for Tesla yesterday. There's also uh, the uh, Shanghai factory shut down temporarily because of COVID. Uh, so that was out this morning. But uh, big move yesterday, back higher uh, through to 800. Kind of stalled out late in the day at 800. And then we get this nice uh, gap up here, 2% for Tesla. So the magic number right there. Um, buyer 800 to 805, somewhere in that range, maybe even extended to like 808, 810. But, you know, that's the buy zone uh, for Tesla. And, you know, the, the resistance from last week remains the same. It's that 865 area, which I don't think, it doesn't feel like we're challenging that anytime soon. If something's going to come in this morning, it's going to be a chance to dip by in front of 800. So, you know, that's what I'm watching uh, here for Tesla. They're the ones that can hike prices and, uh, and certainly get away with it. Um, notwithstanding... Any shenanigans by the CEO challenging certain people to head-to-head -head combat? That's a, it's a weird one, but uh, do your thing, Elon. Uh, I just want to be—I just want to be on the bit of the stock in front of eight hundred dollars. Eight hundred dollars, if we get a chance. Uh, some of the thunder is getting stolen by the Chinese names today, but let's not forget about you know Tesla. It has every chance to move just not not as much, uh, but pretty much just as well. And that eight hundred has been pretty good if you've been able to peg it. Not always the cleanest trade. Like it doesn't always get there. I'm talking this 810 level uh, previously, and I know it, it got through before a monster bounce uh, last week on Tuesday, but you know, I'm going to be staring that one dead eye. Um, I was going to say that uh, you talked about, was it, oh, the boxing match between Elon. Is, was and, it boxing? It was just a fight. It was just it's like just a, a Mortal Kombat fight to the death, I think. Um, and the thing is, is that I don't know if you guys saw this. This is a little bit off topic, but Jake Paul also offering $60 million for Kanye versus Pete Davidson in the ring. $60 million each boxer. Kanye, Kanye for that one, I mean, Kanye, honestly, $60 million. The guy's worth five Bs. But for Pete Davidson, man, that, I don't know if that guy can scratch two coins together. So I would say yeah, but I would be taking that if I was – he calls him Skeet Davidson. Isn't he like 85 pounds? Well, sorry, never mind. No, he's no, like, I'm not. Kanye would mess that dude up. But, yes, I'm saying, like, that's not but even – he has the height advantage. Does he? Pete Davidson? Is he tall? I think he's very tall. He's a tall, lanky oh, okay. dude. Uh, I, I, but, I actually don't know. I mean, I just you – know, all this market talk here. Doesn't about, seem you know, fair. Kanye. Anyways, I, 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 that's – I mean, I – that's not, not that I'd pay for that. That's I not just, a fair fight. I just asked Prad for the link, but that would be a fight that I'd pay for for sure. Um, but uh, anyways, that's just a that's just a joke. I mean, oh, I don't he know is tall as hell. Oh, yeah, he's tall. Yeah, man. He's tall. He's yeah, like 6'3", 6'4". Oh, okay, you. maybe there's something. Apparently there's reasons why Kim's with him. But over to you, Brando. Uh, yeah, that uh, Elon story is hilarious too. Like, he's going to use his left hand only in that fight. Uh, this is the uh, Starbucks headline, or, or I guess a combination of both this morning. We were talking about the J.P. Morgan upgrade, but here we go. Uh, Howard Schultz to return on an interim basis as uh, Kevin Johnson announces his retirement from uh, Starbucks. But uh, J.P.M. liking Starbucks today anyways. Hey, Starbucks. And yeah, they're trying to go green. They're trying to do a lot of things. Seriously? I'm a, so I'm on the bit of, of, uh, of Starbucks here at... 87.35, and of course, that's like three times it bounced off this level. It bounced off 87.35, so it looks like it got to the bid. Uh, it didn't fill me, but I like it also in front of 86. Now, at, at the moment, it was gapped up with the rest of the market, and at the moment that the CEO was announced uh, to be leaving April 4th, uh, $4 moved to the upside. It's since settled down a little bit here, and I'm just looking at how clean this looks. I mean, if you look at the last time it got to 90 last week, right, you get this push down, and then the afternoon resistance level was 85 half. And then you look at today, and that's sort of the support that we're looking at. So I like both these. I mean, this first floor, which is 87.50, I'm bidding in front of, and then right in front of that pre-market low as well. I just like both these levels. And for something like a Starbucks, this is actually pretty decent pre-market volume, almost a million shares. So I'm on board with it here today. 85 goes, and I think you got to forget about it. 
Um, but you can look at that wick top. It goes right to what that previous resistance was. So I'm going to play those support levels in here on Starbucks. First one's going to be at that 87, if I can catch that bid before the open. And then from there, 85. Uh, that's your, I mean, that's your ultimate bottom right around here, that 85 level. We'll see if we can get it. Uh, it's still relative. I mean, the spread is about 10 to 15 cents, but you know, I'll be on the bid, you know, for the next, at least until the open. Um, if I don't get the fill in the first five, 10 minutes or so, then, you know, maybe it's not going to be meant to be. But yeah, I like, I like Starbucks just on the pure setup play. And then you throw in the fact that it's been probably beaten up a little bit too much. I know there's some green issues there and they're working on that and haven't had success. But, you know, at some point, like uh, some of these names have gone down a little bit too far. I'm really getting like over anxious now because like I want to be long everything and it's just like I have to wait for some of these levels. It's like where do I punch long Microsoft 292? Like honestly, uh, this stock's going to rip. Neo's now ripping. I, I, we should already be. It's funny because we literally miss bids by pennies again today. Like it is what it is. Like that Microsoft bid down here at 288.50. I've changed it now to 288.60. If it comes in, great. And uh, shout out to D Queen. Thank you for all the super chats here today. But I don't know anything about uh, British law or anything. So hopefully uh, that can work out well for you um, on that side. Uh, here goes Microsoft. It's already a dollar in the money uh, right now, Microsoft. So let's see where it goes. Uh, actually, it's dollar in the money on the ask. It's only printing 292. So it's 55 cents in the money right now um, but uh, a good move up for Microsoft let's see if we can get going the futures are going to rally at some point here today um, it's just a matter of is it going to be off the open or do we get that dip back in here so I you know I feel like we at least see these highs one more time uh, today but again you know predicting this market on a Fed day is is suicide so uh, but you'll see me put on a bunch of trades obviously that's what we're here for thank you for watching us and we're going to go over to the big screen now and do a little small cap action all right lots of uh china related small caps moving around this morning uh this one specifically i'm going to be looking at uh e hang uh guys eh if you go to the daily chart uh ten dollars here a huge level uh that was this kind of consolidation then that low was ten dollars as well so we've already bounced off there uh, one time for Ehang. So below $10 is a huge move, uh, potentially, anyways, all the way back to 8, 820. Uh, so watch uh, EH. Above that, 12, 1250 comes into play to the upside. DD as well through the lows looks pretty interesting, guys. Yeah, DD's a spicy meatball. Like, I know I'm looking at Alibaba, uh, but DD sort of uh, stands out the same way. It's up so much, man. It's up so much. I definitely love it to $3 uh, for a fade if it can get there, but it's so far from that to support. Um, it's not exactly two dollars and fifty cents, but it might as well be at two forty-five. So I'm looking, um, I, I'm looking at Alibaba ninety-ones. DD is basically the same type of play. There's a question about like what is what is a rune trade in the chat. He, he trades the front month contract on the futures. Uh, his chart is continuous, but the front month currently is the M contract. I uh, just want to make sure I answered that question. I saw that in there. Um, you always want to make sure you guys know what everyone's trading here. Uh, one name that I think we might have mentioned, you mentioned, you mentioned AMC a little bit there. Um, GameStop, for whatever reason, I saw a move the last couple of days, but I didn't find any good levels on it. I do want to be looking at Mullen at least a little bit and Lucid today, but Lucid's the one that I'm likely to trade off of the open. I'm on the offer in front of 23. This one for me is a fade until it's not. And it just, I'll play the short in front of the pre-market high every single chance uh, that I get over there. So I'm on the bid already of Micron, Tesla as well for a bit of a pullback. Uh, and then I'm offering on Lucid. You can sort of see I'm in Sonnet uh, already. And Alibaba has made a bit of a bounce here. Yeah, some, uh, of, yeah, some of these now. names are starting to go. So this is actually, okay, yeah, it's just, it's still in the pre-market high range. So that 91 is still in play, still the same pre-market high at 93.40, but I'm looking for the breakdown through 91. Like, I'm not just shorting it at any price. It has to fail the pre-market load for me to get in. LFG, Taco Eater, LFG, let's go. Uh, right now, we do have Neo uh, bouncing around 9 and 9. We're just having a little sip of water here uh, as Hydration Nation. Uh, we'll put it down here because we only have two minutes ago. Um, Hydration Nation, yeah, stay hydrated, uh, obviously. We'll be talking about a lot of these names. Neo just touched 18 bucks again before falling back in. We're long at 17.90. Let's see where that goes uh, from here. But look at the market right now. I don't know, again, like, 
there's talk happening right now. That's a huge candle down right there. Like, this is a big move down uh, on the NASDAQ right now. It just took out everything. It was working its way back the last half hour, all the way back. And, okay, so we got to watch out for your bids now. I don't know what's going on, but the NASDAQ is cracking down here into the open. Our prices are still fine. I'm not worried about anything here. But watch out with this coming back in. The market is starting to come in now. Um, and, again, this is fine for us. We do have our prices ready to rock and roll. We're watching Alibaba today. Uh, that's already at 92, so that's not going to come in. AMD, NVIDIA. NVIDIA, we have a bid uh, right now on NVIDIA at 232.50. So let's see. Is that? Yeah, so that, we could get that right away. Uh, AMD, we have some bids at 110. So that's a name that we could also get right away on a little bit of a flush down. Uh, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Neo, Baba, those are the names we're looking at today with Fed uh, obviously on our mind. Yeah, exactly. And we got about 40 seconds to go. It's Fed Day. The market is green. Miss V's in the green today. Yep, so hopefully good, good. that's going to be a little bit of good luck for us uh, just watching Tesla because, uh, yeah, Tesla big spike down like 10 bucks. I was on the bid in front of 803 here. It got all the way to 807. Uh, so it looks like these bids could start to come into play rather quickly. Like that's. That's quite yeah, the spike Neo, down. Yeah, everything's spiking now. This is now. starting to spike this down. I might actually adjust uh, some of these bids so we can get a little bit closer to that 800 level. But it is countdown time. This market's really starting to move. Looks like we're going to get a wild one here on Fed Day, Hump Day. Wild one. Uh, sorry, no. Fed Day Tuesday. What am I even talking about? I yeah, said yeah, like, yeah, yeah, Oh, it is Wednesday. What am I talking about? I don't about? know. You're, you're back. Let's you know, I'm it. back. Whatever. Two and one. Ring it. All right. I got right. nothing. Shout out to D Queen. Thank <laughs> you for the super chat, Ms. D Queen, one more time. Uh, okay, so Neo, like nothing's even open yet. We do have some big imbalances that still need to be paired off. It looks like they're starting to get gone, get gone uh, right now. Yeah. DD with a bid. Yeah, some of these are gone now, so we'll have to watch them. They're oh. all pairing off. Uh, Neo looking to open up. Microsoft, a dollar in the money. Let's see where we go from here, but so far, so good. Ripping up to 290. Look at the NASDAQ starting to go. Um, you know, no real outs. Microsoft just touched 291 there. That was a good trade 2940 sorry um we'll have to wait for it but right now the market's just just dancing uh wait for a move to happen nice move to the upside actually yeah and i of course i immediately missed out on that tesla because it got to like 808 and then bounced to the upside uh the trade on micron it hit that 76 bottom now looking to go to the upside i tried to get that 76 50 did not of course i'm going to get that lucid because you know why wouldn't you get lucid when the market starts to bounce to the upside i still want to see if i can't grab that micron and tesla by the way yeah, still down around that 810, so it still has a chance uh, to give that fill down at the 800 level, but the market is trying to go here uh, after that weird pullback that we just saw at that open. DD shares, yeah, not too much happening. It's still challenging that 245 level. I think if it takes out the bottom, that could be the play. I'm not really seeing Alibaba close. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're not going to ring the register yet, but we're a dollar in the money here on Microsoft as it's starting to go back up to the upside right now. Neo not doing much, but we do like Softy here. The Nasdaq's trying to bounce around a little bit. We're long Microsoft. It's a dollar, like I said, in the money. Hopefully we can get a 292 or something. That's what we're really waiting for. But I'm kind of just resting on these positions now, waiting for something to, like, just take off a little bit more here uh, and just give us that direction. Um, what is Apple doing? It was 150. Yeah, so, this, I mean, Apple going the other way right now. I don't know. That's kind of a surprise. Surprise me. Maybe this is worth picking up. Apple back down here to 155. What is happening right now with AAPL as that seems to want to go to the downside? And we have a new position. Now we're into NVIDIA. So now, now we'd be serious uh, because now we've got the big dog on uh, NVIDIA 23250, guys. Yeah, it looks like some of these are starting to come back a little bit. So there we go. I just got into Micron, and there's that Lucid. So spike up at the open. It tries to get through 23, see it not do that, and then immediately starts to fade back in here. Every quarter's uh, usually I'm going to try and get some out here as we try to take some profit. Uh, if you're watching that song, it's moving around a little bit here. Uh, but that spike couldn't get through that 53 level. Looks like that's a pretty good stop out uh, price point for me. Baba is now close to that 91. Finally, it looks like it just broke it down. I just got the short 90.88. So not much slippage on Alibaba to the short side. That's already uh, starting to give it up a bit. 228. Yeah, so we're already, um, it's kind of the opposite here for NEO as we've taken out some nice wins on this one. 95s, we just got some prints right here. Um, this is NEO, of course, 90s, 18s, so a lot of nice upside moves here. But like Neil said, watch out because if it starts to tank down, you're going to watch a lot of these Chinese names go to the downside. If you are looking just to trade something, FXI, the big, I mean, Neil, I talked about KWeb, a little less aggressive here. FXI, the China, big cap uh, names. So NVIDIA, like, like, 
you know, again, it went into the money for us, and then now it's just kind of dancing. So we're going to have to wait for NVIDIA. We just did a little bit of work on some levels there. Like, there's that 230, and if you're going to hold 230, you got to give it back down to 228. So we're going to find out if 228 uh, can hold a little bit on NVIDIA right now. Uh, that's 228.50 uh, are some of those levels. So we're going to see if NVIDIA holds 228 just in case we go to the downside. We're going to line up uh, Baba and knock that one as we get 91 short, already took out some in front of 90. Now we're just going to hold on to it, see where it can go. On Son, by the way, a Sonnet, I just call it Sonnet, uh, we did take the stop out at 53. Wanted to make sure we gave that a tight range. We are able to get some out in front of that 48, so you know, 51, 52 to 48. Uh, but overall, it's starting to head back into the upside. I'll reassess uh, after the opening range gets made. I'm now into Micron off that pre-market low, so I'll give this trade a 76. We still like that 74 level. If things were to get too hairy to the downside in this market, uh, I want to make sure that we're giving some room. Lucid was able to get first target there. So you know, one thing that I told myself uh, is like the names that were the best, um, you know, when you take a couple days off, just go right back to those wells. Lucid was one of them. I looked at a firm like Lucid better. If it gets to those pre-market lows, uh, I'll get God, some more out on the bid that. in front of the 22 uh, and a quarter price. So Lucid's starting to work. Micron making that bounce a little bit here. I definitely want to take some out in front of those uh, pre-market highs as uh, we managed to get the dip buy, first dip buy on Micron uh, after that failed breakdown of the pre-market low, then try to get back in at 76.50 in front of that 76, works under the pre-market high, hold on for the rest, so far so good. Brendo. Uh, some of the travel stocks, guys, uh, pretty strong here to start things off. Casinos specifically, uh, just saw LVS hold some of the uh, pre-market lows there. Big volume came in uh, back through 35 there for uh, LVS so far dollar in the money on Facebook and it stopped at one night. I mean, we had this trade 196.80, 196.50. We went long on Facebook and it just ripped to the upside and we didn't take it out. We should have done that. So now we're waiting in the 70s. We'll see if we can take 60 cents quick time uh, on that one. Microsoft is $1.30 now uh, in the money and still rip city. So, I mean, maybe we need to let's take out piece of Microsoft. And again, we're really happy with this trading today. I mean, this has been absolutely maniac. Uh, there it is. 95. Bang. A nice little trade there. Yeah, we'll hit the siren alerts for this one as Microsoft Microsoft going ham. NVIDIA, we've already taken out a dollar on that piece. Now it's starting to rip to the high side as well. Let's see if we get 235 or so uh, for NVIDIA. I'm just letting all these fly, man, right now. Um, and NVIDIA, dollar in the money. Microsoft, the dollar 70 in the money. Facebook, uh, should take that profit, man. That's only 50 cents now in the money. The only problem that we have is Neo. And by problem, I mean we're up on the name. Let's hope it can go higher than where we are now. But I'm thinking this market takes off here. So let's go, man. We're going to hold our NVIDIAs. We got to go back over to AMD. Maybe there's a play there. Uh, we're already long NVIDIA. I mean, we don't really need to be long AMD, but uh, watching out for that name. Other than that, man, we're trading everything that's on our watch list. I don't have Alibaba, but I know Neil's looking at that one. Wow, look at Softy, guys. Monster move, man. 289.50 in, out 291. That's $1.50, and we're still climbing on Alibaba, uh, not Microsoft. Yeah, Baba just broke $88, so actually made a low of $87.50. So oh, no! You're just <laughs> absolutely flushing at this point. So, a uh, pretty weak name there. I'm, I'm kind of curious as to why Didi's holding up. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, that's still holding a 245. And uh, we, we talked about that K-Web. If you are looking at that instead, um, it's holding the pre-market lows as well. So when I see that happening uh, and I look at Alibaba, it's just, um, look, I'm not saying they all have to follow each other. I know this is the big dog, uh, but I'm going to see if I can't take this one out in front of that 88 level. It just doesn't make any sense to me that everything else seems like it's trying to hold up. And Alibaba is the only one going down here. Nah, I'm going to bank the two and a half bucks if I can get it here. Uh, why am I on the bid? I can just do that. I'm uh, just going to get right out of Alibaba. Because when I, when I look across the board, you're holding those lows. The market's starting to rally yeah, here. No and that breakdown worked. So I'm going to take the money and run on Alibaba. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. The only thing uh, that is a disappointment so far is I, right before the open on that f uh, flush, I repriced my Tesla order. So when it, we had that big spike down, I canceled my bid and then decided I wanted to move it back a bit. It goes to 803.98 or something like this is the bottom, and now right back to 815. So I might have missed out on that bounce in Tesla in front of 800 as, as a subsequent, you know, it's just one of those, you adjust your price because of something you see in front of the open and it ends up being the wrong call here. I'm still holding on to Micron. I want this to break out of the high, still inside of the range. Like we're not really going anywhere here. And then the other shore we had, uh, Lucid, which we still got on, that's managed to hold 2250-ish. 
uh, but we're able to get close to the top, 22.75. Comes down to those quarters, we'll get out, get some more out, and then see if we can hold it through those lows. But so far, uh, so good. Just shouldn't have maybe missed out on that Tesla. Should have just kept that order in there. You, my bid on Baba was 87.30, by the way, guys. It went to 87.40. We didn't get long, but I canceled that. Why? Because we're into Neo here, and uh, yeah, it's dropping like a rock as well. Um, and we just, yes, sir, yes. Uh, we just got, I mean, we're making money on that drop. Unbelievable right now. Uh, decent position here for Neo. Um, we're average, we're, we just took a 40, but our average price, as you can see, uh, is in the 30s. So we'll see if that can drop down. I'm not going to hold this too much past 17. It's dropping like a rock here. And we talked about that happening, so that's why. We put on our big position, and you can see the average price is 30. So, you know, we held this all the way down. It's going to fade out. It looks like it's not going to give any love uh, back upside. But Neo, the one that's dropping down in Ho-Hum, we're still crushing it, though, guys, because look at Softy. This is $2.40 now in the money on Microsoft. Facebook is now a dollar in the money. And NVIDIA is now a dollar in the money. So you were just staying with the tech names, and we're absolutely crushing them to the long side. We called a rally. Like, I was mocked to last week when I said we're going to rally into the Fed. We had 3% now. NASDAQ yesterday. We have 2% NASDAQ right now. So, I mean, that's 5% right there. Take your money out if you're long. But here it is. Microsoft just continues, man. 260. Here we go. We get that 292 on Microsoft. Big time trading right there. The only mistake all day is just holding on to this NEO as that just keeps on coming to the outside. Maybe that, like I said, too much profit taking here on these Chinese names today. Yeah, they're up so much, man. Like, that's, that's sort of the thing to me. I'm kind of kicking myself. Like, maybe I should have got into a second one, not just Alibaba. Here comes Micon. I want to hold through this breakout. We didn't really go over uh, targets. If we take out that top, and that's going to be 77.50 on Micron, I'm looking right to last week's, well, I mean, l late last week's highs. That 79 level is going to be uh, in play for me. So if we can get a couple of bucks out of that trade, we'll be very happy to do so. And overall, like, the market's right back to the, to the pre-market highs. One thing that has not maybe been as wild as I was expecting is the oil trade. I mean, CVX is here at that 160 level, uh, and I thought 165 would be it, but you're really not getting too much play past that 160. The volatility in oil hasn't been there yet as Micron. There we go, finally taking it out. Uh, so it's up, a, up about a buck now, but I'm looking uh, for that 79 level of Micron. 250 is my target. That's funny because like Nvidia is two hundred and thirty dollars, and I can't even get it. I mean, it's in the money a dollar. I thought this name would have be would be running a hell of a lot more uh, than it is. So let's hold out hope here uh, that Micron event or sorry Nvidia eventually goes here because honestly, I don't know. It should have gone already. Um, Three dollars in the money, Microsoft only fifty cents on the money in Nvidia. So that's bothering me a little bit. I I feel like we need to get out of this. What's that high two thirty four right there? Uh, so that's something to look at. Okay, so there's finally uh, the move down on Neo. So we talked about. About that we averaged it in we took some profits but Neil's going to be a negative name for us uh, today as all the tech names are bouncing like crazy uh, but just not NIO what's up uh, Brendo uh, just a heads up guys the market ripping right now back to day highs here there's a ton of uh, Russia Ukraine headlines coming through right now uh, most of which seem to be in the right direction so helping this rally continue here it would appear for the market yeah, and we'll do one of these as I get my next leg. Yeah, we're putting that one in the basket, uh, not throwing basketballs at uh, star rookie players, LeBron. Uh, Lucy, we just got some out in front of 22:30. By the way, that was a dirty play by LeBron. I don't care how big LeBron's of a star the dirtiest he is. player in the NBA. Yeah, I don't care how big of a star he is. It was dirty. It was ugly, uh, and he deserved what he got. But, I hate uh, LeBron James. Uh, Lucid, gonna take that next leg out. The context of this reversal is: if you're shorting something, either it should be up too high or it should be a weak stock. Lucid's a weak stock. I have not mentioned a firm yet today. Uh, because it's not doing anything. It gets to $30. I think that's an interesting price level. I know someone's asking uh, a firm, why is it doing nothing? I don't know. But if it's not, then I'm not going to trade it. Uh, that breakout, huge, huge candle here on Micron. I guess in the market as well, uh, through that top. So it looks like the break is on. I now want to be buying dips. Once you take out the pre-market high, now I think we've got the direction that we want. So I'll be looking to buy some dips, hopefully maybe off of VWAP or back at that 76.50. Starbucks was the other long that never came in, but interestingly enough, it's not really participating. I don't like the fact that we're just barcoding here, not doing a lot of volume. I'll leave my bid in for now, uh, the one in front of 87, but this one has to get going. It's a little bit relatively uh, Ooh, useless. Ooh, Nelly. Yeah, buddy, we are reloaded. So we're having a monster, monster day here, guys. We reloaded that Neo. We said, no, thank you. Uh, and now we're long Neo right down here at 1694. We hit the NVIDIA as well. Wow, this is be turning out to be just another one of these days, guys. We hit the NVIDIA long, breaking through 
through 234. Now it's at 235. So, you know, again, we started buying NVIDIA down here at 232. Uh, so that's a good trade now up to 236. Let's go NVIDIA right now. $1.50 now in the money on Facebook as that at its high. Let's just do this as well. Let's get some out of Facebook right now. We can get some 34, 35 prints on Facebook. We'll take that. Nice little move to the upside as the market is rally city. And I'm so glad to be, uh, you know, on the show here again today as we've been talking about these rallies and we hit them today. We hit them pretty damn good, man. Facebook, Microsoft, Neo, NVIDIA, all dollars in the money uh, right now. So a good trade so far here today. Hopefully we continue the rally as we're stuck long. Um, but uh, so far, so good here. We just tried to get out of that Facebook right there at 30s. And now it dipped into the 20s. Hopefully we get another little bit of a bump up here. Uh, and can catch, there it is. Oh, we were at 34 there. Went to 33. Let's go Facebook. Oh, and uh, yeah, another thing just went. I uh, remember AMC 15, that's a thing. It actually tested the pre-market uh, high right at the open and didn't take it out, but just now got through that 15 level. If you're tuning in a little bit late, God. I'm like, I don't care what that, that the story is. It doesn't really matter. Who cares about that HYMC nonsense? But um, $15 was just last week, afternoon resistance levels um, going into Friday. So that's the break at a clean 15 for me. I just got into it for the first time. Looks like a good out so far in BABA because that's coming back to 89. But I'm watching DD for a fade off the pre-market highs. Brendan. Uh, good day for Kathy Wood so far. 4.8% here for uh, ARK. ARKK bounced hard off 56. Uh, big volume, guys. Back to the upside. Look, part of the LeBron uh, hatred is just because, like, I'm hating on him. I mean, uh, being well, in the being in the East, I mean, he screwed us a lot of times yeah, with Miami exactly. Heat. He took Bosch away from us. Uh, and then what he did to Scotty Barnes. I mean, it's, it is what it is. But uh, right now, look, we just missed that Facebook. I cannot believe that. Should have just marketed it out right there on that Facebook. But we'll see if we can get it back up to 196. That really sucks. But look at NVIDIA going now. 236 again coming through. We are offering NVIDIA 236.40. But I'm thinking about, that's just because it's right up here that's 236.50 let's see if it goes the futures want to go right now we're pretty happy with it what did we just get right there there it is facebook how you like that facebook right now we'll go um we're smoking today guys there's a nice little facebook win look 195 long guys we just got it at 196.25 facebook upside microsoft two dollars nvidia two dollars neo running miss v Hey guys, I want to give a big shout out to D Queen for the win. Thank you so much for your generosity. Uh, we appreciate it so, so much. I hope you're having a wonderful day. And also Henry Zat sent us a super chat saying Sean Katina and Neil Roberts equals legends. Totally agreed, guys. And if you also find our show helpful and entertaining, please make sure you like this video. Back to you guys. Thank, Thank you, Henry Z. Thank you yeah. very much, Henry. Yeah, 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 we'll, yeah. we'll take it. We we'll love it. it. We'll take the it. market's finally taking... Well, I should say this. Uh, I, I don't want to jinx it. Uh, but the market finally... And by the, by the market, I mean the NASDAQ finally taking out that pre-market top there. That's why, you know, if you got some target to the upside, hopefully this is the move that'll take us. So I do expect it'll have some trouble uh, 100 points from now, but that's just uh, pessimism based on the fact that it's Fed Day. Maybe you'll wait for that bigger move. We're getting close to the target for me uh, on Micron, which... Obviously, it's a lot easier to sit there and hold the longs that are working, but Lucid retested 23, and I wasn't able to get back in at 22.75. If it comes back up here again, I will try to reload that short because I do have one short on. Oh. It is Lucid. It is still, you know what, uh, Brendan? That retail number this morning, guys, at 8.30. Even the retail stocks catching a bit this morning. Nice move so far here from Macy's, up more than a buck. I mean, we'll just, uh, oh, Macy's. Yeah, we talked about Macy's yesterday. We liked it. That was a good idea. But what was a better idea, I feel like, is NVIDIA. We're $4 now in the money. Uh, it's starting to just rip to the upside here. NVIDIA is starting to go, 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 like buy, buy, buy. And again, the sticky note, I mean, let's just call it... Called out for what it is. I mean, yesterday, you know, we had this thing, you know, we had the Baba bottoms and things like that. Uh, but look what we have here for NVIDIA written down here, 232 long. It's at 237. That's $5 right there for you on NVIDIA. There's the long 232. Not only do I write it down on the sticky note, but I actually have it in the account. So there it is right there, 232 long on NVIDIA. It's still ripping. We liked it so much, we took a 234 as well. Wow, what a big day this is turning out to be. Let's go uh, for all of these markets right up to the upside. It's great because when we call these rips and they actually happen, it's like, wow, you know, don't believe it. But here it is, man. Facebook, NVIDIA, everything starting to tick out new highs. NVIDIA back to day's high right now. And I don't think this, this move is even done yet. So nice moves to the upside. We have cashed some out um, of most of these trades, but we're still holding on uh, to the decent spot on NVIDIA as it's 250 now in the money. Biggest trade here uh, for me today, NVDA, and we're liking it.
Yeah, I actually just took my target. I'm not looking to give horse in the mouth. Uh, Mike Tron gave me exactly what we wanted. We go back to last week's, you know, we talked about like Friday, Friday afternoon, sort of Friday morning, uh, that top at 78 half, 79. It just spiked up there. So in Mike Tron on the dip and out altogether. AMC, oddly enough, and well, I shouldn't say oddly enough. You know, it's, it's a nice level break at 15. It's not really accelerating just yet, but I'll play this one to the, to the next range. Like if you're breaking here, you know, then I want to take some out in front of this area. And then that's going to be about 15 and a quarter. Uh, and then I'm, the rest out probably 1550 to 1560. If I'm going to play that price range, let's see it actually start to go a little bit more here. Uh, Bob was actually on the move back to the upside, which does take me to Didi, which tried to take the top and a bit of a wick off top on Didi. Uh, that's got to be faded for me. That's a wick off top through the pre-market high. So you know, I'm going to be trying the short here on Didi uh, after going in and out of Baba. Brendo. It was only a matter of time until we got some low float action going. It looks like uh, American Rebel Corporation, AREB. This is not the first time this one's gone, but uh, heads up on this 30% here. Just trying to take out uh, day highs once again for AREB. Yeah, we really like, uh, yeah, I mean, look, low floaters, they don't care what, what day it is. Uh, they're going to be moving no matter what. Let's check out that HYMC quickly just to see. Uh, it's down to 140. I was going to see, is there anything happening with HYMC today? Uh, not really. Uh, well, there was off the open a little bit. Uh, but it's to the downside, as a lot of us, not me, but a lot of people stuck long on HYMC there. Hopefully you're out of it. Um, okay, Neo trying to move again, man. I mean, this is now 50 cents in the money. Obviously, we wish we didn't have that dump off right there, but we do. Uh, and and then we noticed that, hey, man, maybe we got out a little too early. Um, and then there's the bump all the way back up to VWAP one more time for NIO. So another 50 cent winner. We have $3 now in the money on NVIDIA and that's still going. But I don't have any um, reason to get out of this. It's only up 3%. NVIDIA should go up 7, 8, 9% today. So let's go NVIDIA to the high side right now. AMD, I'm glad. I'm not glad we missed it. But, um, you know, we can't have both of these. AMD also just took out the day's high up to 113. So, yeah, so far so good. Good man. Microsoft, two dollars in the money. That is near the high. Facebook is rocking and rolling. So so far so good here on all of these trades. We are going to have to get into more, man. Goldman Sachs up two percent. Palantir up four percent. That's a great move for Palantir today. Um, that's taking out eleven twenty. That might be a buy. We haven't even looked at Ford yet. But wow, man. I just keep looking over and it's just like climb, climb, climb. Like this Nasdaq is going insane right now. Yeah, market's heading the upside. But uh, Didi, we got into that short. Wick off top, consolidation 55 to 60, so we we'll grab 57s to the short side of the trade. Uh, AMC still resisting, by the way, so not everything looks super strong. I could have had some out of 20s. I'm sitting in front of 25. The trend is still pretty strong into that upside. And just going back over to BABA, like I'm in DD, and it's worth watching all these names together. BABA right back at that 90. Uh, and it's looking pretty solid for a reload here on relative weakness. I do have to you know, understand the fact that if you short two of these names at the same time, uh, you got to make sure you have outs on both. It's easier with Didi because that high of the day looms. Uh, but Baba looking like it's rolling over. I'm going to play this 90 to 90 half area uh, for the reload. It was already good once. You know, the relative weakness was there. And now you're sort of seeing it try to roll over again. I'm not sure it gives just as big of a move. But if we can get a quick scalp in and out of Baba one that's already worked, uh, we're going to go back to that well. All right, thank you to uh, the trader formerly known as Jude Fernando. Many nice comments on Twitter. Thank you, my man. Uh, that's what it's all about. And I mean, this is the kind of stuff. This is why I do it, man. Um, not, not, I mean, we're doing it to trade. I love the job, but this is what it is. The key to success is your ability to capitalize on the opportunity when it presents itself. Sticky note, whatever, from me, uh, you know, repeat the opportunities. So re replete replete what does that mean uh with the opportunities but there it is just do it here it is a sticky note thank you jude you're always in the chat so thank you so much for that i'll reread that and get that right the next time um but uh right now we're just holding on to everything and trying to find some more opportunities i did say um we want to look at some banks i mean the financials we don't really trade those that much unless they're really moving i mean i'm just a tech guy you guys know that we i, I trade everything under the sun uh but mainly these big guys but yeah lice move up for jp morgan like if you're looking at the banks that take on the pre market was great 134.86 that's a huge bump to the upside right now uh for jp morgan but yeah so far so good here man we're rocking we're just crushing it uh right now four longs all to the upside here and uh the market continues to go but there's that jp morgan 135 area that we just took out so you might get some support if you fade back into 135 on jpm and video now three bucks in the money we do have an offer out here though just to let you guys know um 237.40 actually right here right now 
now. That's the high of the day. If we can take a piece out there and let the rest ride, we should do that. So right now, 237.40, we're just waiting for it. I mean, what's the difference? 30 cents. Maybe we take it out now, but hopefully we get a little bit of a move up here on NVIDIA and be able to take this out. Bang, there it is, $3.50. We're on one again here. Big monster move, 350, 250 for Microsoft, a buck 50 for Facebook, 50 cents for Neo. Neo, this is a monster day. Yeah, AMC finally gave target. I had to wait a while for that breakout to start going here. I'm also watching Mullen, by the way. Mullen gets to $2. I think uh, you have an idea what I might be looking at uh, for MULN. But AMC starting to go. It's up 5%. Just took the first leg out in front of the quarters, like we mentioned. And I'm going to get the rest out in front of 1550. Um, 50 to 1550 to 1565 is the range, but 50 is a nice round number, so we're going to go with that. Uh, if you are watching um, some of these, uh, some of these, I guess Chinese names, K Web, which is the uh, which is that index, so, so that ETF I talked about, has broken through the pre market highs. Now, all while Baba is still holding right around that 90, so relative weakness in Baba. I am short that one, and DD basically flat. But watch K Web; it is taking out those highs, so there is an attempt uh, for those to join the party to the upside. I feel like it was whoops. Uh, I feel like it was the wrong call, maybe to get out of uh, MU at 79. I did want to dip by. If it comes to VWAP, I'm still willing to grab it there. Um, but we're going to take the trade uh, to our specifications every single time and send you to Brennan when he asks. I just saw a bit of a spike in Kohl's, guys. KSS up on this. Hudson Bay, apparently, considered a bid for uh, Kohl's. So a little bit of a volume spike. Up nicely, though, with the rest of the retail group, anyway, for Kohl's. Kohl's. Okay, Hudson Bay. Yeah, they were... Um involved you, with uh didn't i thought hudson's bay was with nordstrom no uh, jwn yeah nordstrom's i thought i don't know there was some uh, there was yeah. something about that a while ago i don't know if that ever got uh, got, Good question. got done sure. there I, I thought there was something uh, i didn't even know hbc still existed i mean we have the bay here but Ouch. uh oh, I come on I don't know. Well, where? I mean, where? Is that Sherway? I don't know where else it is. Is it still at uh, Eaton Center? I don't know. Uh, HBC. But anyways, okay, um, here we go. Uh, upside there. Uh, 117. So we're still on Neo, man. Uh, I just wish we didn't have that dump off, but we did. So that's going to hurt us uh, on the negative side because we did, did have more shares there. But we did defend that level. It was exactly what we talked about, 17. It just it broke a little lower. We got out at 1680, uh, and then it ripped back up, and then we just punched along again at 94. So we do give up a little bit of you know, money there on the downside, uh, and we didn't punch as many shares back through. So we only had half the trade. So this one's not as big for us uh, as it probably should be. But um, I'm going to go back over to Palantir again uh, just to look at this. It's 11.30. I mean, it's, wow. Whoa. What wow, the? Aunt Kathy. Uh, AMC taking off as well right now, it, it, that, like. it was weird, man, because, like, it was it was like 10 cents away from my target. I'm like, oh, it's yeah, not going it to fill yet. And the next thing I know, I was actually filled. A lot of times, that just means you have one of those like market orders spiking it to the upside, and I should be fading a move like that. But no need to jump in front of the moving freight train that is AMC. The $16 level looks a heck of a lot better. So no, 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 you're not going to trick me into shorting AMC uh, unless it gets to $16. I'm not really watching uh, GME. But uh, this market uh, dragging a lot to the upside. Tesla tried just now to get through its pre-market high there at 825 couldn't quite get there and look this sometimes you get this on a fed day like you you get a strong move and some things just resist breaking out it's almost like they want to wait a consolidation above 1815 or so you know around these levels you get a wick bottom if we can consolidate around that price i think it has a good chance to make a breakout um yeah i see a lot of other names you guys are talking about i am still in uh, both dd and baba whoops uh, that butterfly stock, whatever. I'll see if I can't get that one butterfly up. But that HYMC, like I'm not saying it's a scam, but Brendan mentioned, um, Brendan had mentioned they hadn't actually produced any uh, precious metals, he said, but gold. I thought they were just a gold miner, but they hadn't produced anything. So it's, you're seeing it fall to the downside. I'm not terribly surprised by that. Uh, you know, the investment was interesting, but uh, obviously a bit of a nothing burger here as it has fallen uh, both yesterday and then again here today. Yeah, uh, no surprise. I mean, I'm just honestly like I'm not even really, you know, worrying about anything right now. Uh, Facebook, just a monster, monster move. We got to clear that out. That's 951. I'm going to clear this out uh, so you can see exactly what we're talking about. There was not didn't go up to 295 there, guys. Um, OK, so we'll go OK there. Uh, here it is a monster move up for Facebook. We're long at 195. It's at 197.50. Uh, yeah, we're cashing in on that one. Hopefully pretty good here. Uh, Three dollars in the money on Neo and Ford. Uh, another name we could look at. If there's any names you guys want us to look at, please uh, let me know because I'm willing to look at them because I feel like I'm just going to hold uh, 
uh, onto these names now as they just keep on working. So uh, we'll hold some of them. I don't have any real targets now. Uh, like $2 in the money on Facebook. What am I going to do? Dump it. Um, yesterday we shorted for it. Didn't work out well in the afternoon there. Um, but uh, 1650 high side there for Ford. I still feel like it can run from these levels. Uh, 1680 was the high side right there. But uh, maybe. Maybe we got to look short now. I don't know. I mean, the market's up 2%, and Ford is at this top of 1650. Let's try a little short here on Ford um, and against that 1650. So we're going to try a short just in case the market does come back in here. We you know, we'll want to have something on, on board here. Uh, I, I just don't want to get out of anything else, man. Neil's a 70 cent winner right now. NVIDIA's $4. Microsoft's $2. Facebook's $2. But we're going to go short Ford. Yeah, I was actually looking at. Uh the, the stock I oh, love no. a firm. I was looking at a, a firm for a short, but I didn't love the levels. AMD just tried to take out a 113 and couldn't get going. Remember, everything else was breaking out. Like I said, Micron broke out, oh, Nvidia yeah. broke yeah, out. Yeah. AMD fading off of 113. That's relative weakness if I've ever seen a double top here at 113. Um, I might be trying to short, cross my fingers here on AMD off the 113 level as we go already 10 o'clock. Uh, let's get to Brendan for happening now. What the? Hey guys, nice positive day right across the board. Here we go. Uh, as we were saying, well, that's that's new. Two uh, percent there for the Nasdaq. The Dow 1.27. Uh, the S&P 1.4 to the upside. But positivity top to bottom here, including both Bitcoin and uh, Ethereum, benefiting from uh, the rally as well. Back uh, higher. I don't know if I can. There we go. Yeah, it is going to work. Uh, some of the Chinese names we were talking about. NIO. We saw yeah, monster gain. 17 percent still to the upside. NVIDIA as well. Chip makers continue to rally. And we also mentioned some of the oil stocks continuing to benefit as well from wild swings in uh, crude oil, guys. We didn't mention, but it's Wednesday as well. So oil inventory numbers coming up at 1030. Back over to you. Right, yes, no, definitely, definitely should have mentioned that, of course, uh, possibly moving some of them. But uh, I was disappointed in CVX and the lack of movement. That could be it. We could be waiting for those inventories. Micron pulled back close, but not quite in here to VWAP. Is, you know, I like 77.50 a little bit better where it checked up before. And look, you're breaking out 7% on Micron. And this is what we're looking at for AMD. And this is why I was sort of just talking about this uh, as relatively weak. Here it comes, AMD, now retesting this 113 level. Maybe it's a late break that needs Needs to happen here but you know I'll, pro I'll i'll take my shot cross my heart and hope not to get run over if it's if it goes through the high of the day i'm just going to get out but uh, amd could not crack 113 with any kind of juice uh so if it breaks like 113 quarters i'll just get on maybe reverse into a long like at least you can get into this one um and it hasn't gone yet but uh that relative weakness so the market's not going to go any further it keeps on touching like 112.90 not filling me so i'm just going to take 112.80 it's 10 cents difference on a hundred dollar stock I shouldn't care, so I just grabbed the short in AMD. I don't want this through the pre-market high. If it goes through, I'm just going to get out of it. But I can't ignore the fact that it's relatively weak at this point. Look, I'm going to, um, so, so Microsoft just fell back in here as the market continues to go upside. It's fine. I mean, we have a monster, monster trade uh, on board here, as you guys know, uh, on everything, man. I mean, NVIDIA is now $5 in the money. NVIDIA just continues to climb. We just posted that also on our Twitter. Like, we talked about this move in NVIDIA. We said go long 232. I mean, we already t showed you that on the sticky note. So far, so good on that one um, as that's starting to move. Microsoft, you know, we, we got long again. It's starting to go now. Uh, sure, our average price is 294 that's nice but we'd like to get this back up here into these 291 and change we just did a reload right there on microsoft so let's see if it can work out there it is hell yeah all right we're reloaded Bang, there it is, nice little trade uh, on Softy. As here we go, uh, big time upside move for Softy on the reload, man. We, were, we didn't have enough shares, but we do now. $5 in the money on NVIDIA, 70 cents in the money now on NEO, and $2.50 on Facebook. And guess what? Even the short that we took, Neil, is working out there. Ford to the downside. Let's take a piece out here if we can at 36, but there goes Ford. We got a 41 or 42 short. Oh, we just missed the 36 bid, but we're there on 36. If we can come in and get that, we'll take it right now, the bid on 36 for Ford coming through, hopefully. Uh, did we get it? There it is, down to 34 now. Nice little win on the short side for Ford. That's a banger one more time. Yeah, there was a, I mean, GM had their news uh, yesterday, but I didn't see as much action off that, uh, off that name uh, relative to Ford. Mullen, uh, which I'm still ha on the hunt for, looks like it's going to be relatively weak. I got into AMD, hasn't really moved much yet, but the thing about AMD is that's going to be, it's a reversal. If it breaks out, 
you know, everything else has gone at this point, so AMD following suit would make sense to me, but I can't sit there and stare at it, do that dollar back and forth and not want to try and capture a bit of that trade, so you know, I'm going to get on the short side first. We'll see if it can hold out. I'm still in this DD, which... Here's DD for you. It does the capitulation candle. You're now seeing it consolidate, which it's been doing for a while. I still like a break of the low of the day at 245, so I'll be adding to it if it gets there. But I need to take something off. So if it goes like to 250, I'll take a little bit off. See if I can't rinse and repeat off of some of those levels. But DD, uh, lulling me to sleep, but up 40%. It breaks that bottom. Anything up 40% that breaks that low. I like the chance for that gap fill. Brendo? Coinbase guys just uh, popping up. They just came out with uh, this note. I'll reopen this one more time. But uh, Coinbase Pay, uh, they're calling it the fastest and easiest way to fund your Coinbase wallet. So I just saw uh, Coinbase took out day highs there. Came right back in. But uh, nice day anyways for them. Bitcoin's really not moving. Again, Bitcoin's been bouncing off 40,000 yeah, and not really yeah. going anywhere. And I kind of feel like every time that's the case, I don't want to trade Coinbase and then you know Brendan brings a story and it's like five and a half percent to the upside I'm like my first gut is like really it's gonna be up that much okay they sure they have the good news uh, I'd much rather be playing it off the support level when I don't see uh, any actual movement or volatility uh, going on uh, in, in actual cryptocurrencies AMD move man like let's go like if you get either break out the high or just come back into VWAP so we can take some profit. Like I don't want 20, 30 cents. I want it down here at 112.50 or so. And then I want to take some more out in front of 112. And if it makes the break later on, fair enough. We can jump on that long train. Uh, DD just got the first fill because if that's what it wants to do, fair enough. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be taking a break of 245. So getting some profit out in front of it does make some sense to me at least. Uh, you, know, you can always add to your position altogether and not, not bother to, but you know, I'm going to take this rollover on DD and then add if it breaks at 245. Looking to still, you know, if the market does want to come back down here, as I just got the first out on AMD, so we're not looking at any gift horses in the mouth there, I look back at Tesla, and it's like, where's the pullback? Uh, yeah, not for Tesla. It broke back out. You're still holding around those highs. So the 800 level, pretty much throw that out the window. Looks like we're not going to have a ch second crack at that one. Um, first leg out in AMD, the second one to be in front of 112. I don't necessarily think this is going to be falling um, too, too far here. The chips have been strong. Relative weak weakness was enough for the short, but not enough to try to hit a home run with it. Uh, yeah, no, I'm going to try. And again, we've identified that Microsoft is going to be, uh, looks like it's going to be the weakest name here uh, on our board. So we're going to wait to see if it drops below this two set, 290, sorry. But we do want to average into this play just in case, you know, there's something here for it. Um, but we are going to wait for Microsoft to go upside there. We're still $5 in the money on NVIDIA. Uh, but we are looking to get out of NEO now. As I was just realizing, like, we're in the money here pretty nicely. We broke below the 50 period. If I'm going to stay long names, it's, it shouldn't be a Chinese name uh, just because, again, there's just too much out there for them uh, today. I think it was a monster move. And again, it's kind of like talking the other way around. You know what? Maybe I'll just wait to see if we do take out this 50 period again on, on this name. Uh, it's just I feel like the profit taking, if the market does sell, I feel like they'll sell the Chinese names just because um, it's a, such a high profit spot from yesterday where Microsoft, NVIDIA, all these plays, AMD and so on and Facebook, whatever, all the big caps. I feel like they still have a lot of room to run. And at NEO, I don't know if there's a lot of hesitancy about these Chinese names, um, especially given the news today. It seems like it's a good opportunity to get out. And if, if you're holding some bags, that could be a good opportunity to get out. So we'll wait to see. I mean, NEO could also be a trade of the day because we've learned our lesson from there. We versed it into the long. We don't really get the wick off bottom that we like, but still a nice move. I think if we can get back into the 60s, we should probably take this out on NIO. Uh, even right now I'm debating it man the market's coming down I'm long everything and I don't really need to be long these Chinese names right now so let's get out of Neo hey man it's a 50 cent win we'll take it but we are going to get out so I'm going to I am going to John Reinhardt I am getting back into uh, Alibaba at least I'm trying to but I wanted to point out KWeb here uh, as well and that's and that's that ETF it's got a double top at 20 uh, 28 essentially and you're looking at a lower consolidation that's you know what that might be set up better I'm going to if I can, I'm going to go ahead and cancel uh, on Alibaba. I'm probably not going to get that fill anyways. And just go right over to this ETF. Because, you know, if it's going to set this one up and you don't have to pick a name, I said this could be a good vehicle to trade. And that's set up pretty well. Like, it tried to break out. You saw some weakness. Everything gapped up so much. Now 25%. If the market rolls over, 
you know, why not jump at something like this, where the trade seems pretty well defined here. It's overextended. It's already tried to go a couple of times here. I know my stops through that high of the day. Uh, understandably, if it takes out the top, I want to get out of it. And I'm still in that DD, by the way. You know, that trade has been working out uh, at least a little bit here. But we're bouncing back towards 257. I'm going to reload that one in front of 260. Uh, AMD did not give our second fill. It got down to that 122.25 or so. Took the first 50 cents. Going to see if we can't get the buck out of the trade in front of that 112. Uh, and going back over to uh, what was a runner, we already got it's a lot of trades we got in and out of in the long side because I anticipated I wanted a specific range. So, you know, AMC goes a few pennies further than that 15.50, but now it's pulling right back into that $15 level. I'll give it one shot. Uh, on the way back here in front of 15s, maybe pick up like five, sixes, something along those lines. And if it can't hold, fair enough, we would just get quickly out of it. But, you know, getting out of some of these and then looking for that bounce play, if we anticipate it can be range bound on a Fed day, this is one way to be able to trade it. Micron, um, similarly, is right back into VWAP. So I'm now looking for a reload there as it bounces. So a little bit of patience to be played in some of these names. Oh, give me the fill, actually. I wanted to see it bounce off you, I'll consolidate, and now we'll take the long. So don't want to throw that, don't want to throw it away that money from the morning, but now we have an opportunity settling back in to get it, uh, to get these reloads. So I took AMD, AMC, and KWeb is on the New York Stock Exchange. I don't know why. ETFs in my head, it's like it should be on the Amex, and yeah, yeah. this one's tech, so it should be on the NASDAQ. But either way, it's on the New York, which is interesting. If it takes out the high, we'll be out of that one, and maybe I should have gone to Baba. We'll see. Uh, yeah, so just just for an update here, um, we're going to give this just below 290 here. So Microsoft has come back in. We, we knew this would sort of happen here. As we talked about it being weaker, it's hitting uh, the market, trying to hit some lows here. So uh, not lows. I mean, we're still up 2%, but it's trying to hit that 50 period uh, to go to the downside. So we are very aware of, of what Microsoft's doing. So we took a little bit out uh, right there. We did take another piece at 2 uh, 290.20, so that's where we're long right now. We're gonna get out if it breaks 289.79. Uh, that's the, the target, but who knows, man. Uh, if, if this is weak, it's weak. We still have profit on this name, and uh, we'll just get out. Here it comes, it's gonna drop down right now. So we gotta watch out, man. Some of these names are starting to turn around a bit here. I don't know if, what we're gonna do, but it doesn't seem like Microsoft is as strong yeah. uh, here today as maybe it was yesterday, as it is outpacing the market to the downside now. Only up 1% while the market's up double that. So that's a pause for consideration. It looks like we're going to get stopped out right there. It is. So now we're stopped out on Microsoft. So we'll flush ourselves down the toilet a <clears throat> little bit now uh, on that trade. But that's fine. We've already hit Microsoft. Microsoft's a positive name for us today. The only negative name is NIO. And we got out of that just right now at 40 for a 50 cent winner. So all good on the reload back. But we did lose on that first beat. So things are starting to come back in. I don't know if we should be averaging in here um, or just letting the market settle as we are now getting below VWAP. Uh, so we have given some money back. Uh, but for the short working for us that's a good one at 42 all the way down 34 35 and then 31 so Ford working for the short for us uh, and helping us make a little bit of money back on some of these longs that are starting to misstep a little bit yeah and that was the same thing like I just got back in VWAP and on Micron and then you see it it took out the range to the bottom so I'm gonna be out of that one I just have the two ch uh, a Chinese related uh, oh, short side trades to go along with uh, uh, to go along with AMD which uh, by the way it just barely, barely touched that 112. So we're sitting on the bid here saying, I didn't need this to be the home run trade. So that one's going to work out. Just got another wick bottom there. So, you know, it's relatively weak, it's, which is a hard thing to say when it's up 3%. Obviously, it's a pretty strong name. But the only reason I'm saying that is because NVIDIA and Micron were a heck of a lot stronger. So we did play the fade over here in AMD, and it has worked for now. But KWeb is looking pretty strong here. Oh, you got me again. I just typed in the NQ. Uh, KWeb. I just got some more shares. We got our price 84s. We'll risk about 25 cents plus slippage. You get back down to the support level. Like 50s down here is a little, little bit better than 1 to 1. And then VWAP gives you about 2 to 1. I like the setup, but this is pretty strong looking like it makes a run uh, to the upside. I just don't love longing this up 26%. I can't bring myself to do it. So I'm going to be looking for short setups uh, on KWeb and those Chinese names. That's just the way I, I choose to play it. Somehow, uh, somehow, while that's going on, you're not really seeing the same level of strength in Didi. It's still barcoding. The longer it does this, uh, the more likely that 245 breakdown is, is going to be fantastic. Uh, but if it does break the top, it could be a late bloomer. I just think Didi's in a bit of a different ballpark uh, to some of these other Chinese names for, you know, obviously, it's a $2 stock and beaten up even more uh, than any of the other ones that we've looked at. It's just not doing a heck of a lot here.
Well, this is embarrassing. Um, we literally get out at the very bottom of Microsoft and then it rips a dollar. Uh, at least we had it um, uh, on board. It's still a positive name for us. Uh, but look at Microsoft. We get out and then it literally just touched 291.14. A dollar, it went up a dollar 20 off that bottom. So like, I don't know uh, how that just happened right there. It happened to me on Neo and it happened to me on Microsoft. So. Uh, I'm trying to extend these stops. I guess we got to go a little bit deeper uh, on the stops because that was a monster move back upside. And then, by the way, we talked about NVIDIA, no slowing down. Money, 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 $5 money, and money, 50 cents money. in the money right now for NVIDIA. Look at this move to the upside. Wow. Just continues to go, man. We tweeted this one out as well. Uh, good day today for sure. Crypto not really moving like Neil was mentioning. Still Bitcoin 41,000. So that's that. Um, yeah, what's up? That's that butterfly karma. Yeah, you're right uh, on that one, Dominic. Uh, shout out to Packer Nation as well. Um, but uh, okay, let's go. NVIDIA, like 240 now. $6. $6 in the money right now for NVIDIA, $3 in the money for Facebook. What would have been a monster now for Microsoft? We don't have that, but there goes Facebook, man. Big time movement. Look at this long, 195 for Facebook, and we still have a third of it. So my, Facebook's still starting to run, man. This has been a monster, monster day for us here today. Um, uh, everything, everything working for us. The only name we're red on is Neo, which is crazy because we've been long and had some great trades on this name. Just got dumped out right there and didn't get that reload back in. We'll probably try Alibaba soon. I'm looking for more trades, but honestly, like I'm at such a high spot right now that I don't need to do anything. Um, Nvidia 60. 60 dollars now uh, in the money. I was going to say $61 in the money. Uh, Enbridge to the upside, 56 bucks. Uh, maybe the Q's up 2.16%. Everything just rocking here. AMD takes that 113. Tesla takes eight, is up to 830 right now. Man, this is a crazy day. Yeah, market's starting to go again. Secondary push here, I think. Finally dragging AMD with it. We were able to get out of our short. We take the win there, and now reverse into the long. I said it would be a reversal. It's not a reversal here because I did get out of the short altogether, uh, but I'm now long 113.17 the top was 113.10 it'll be this instead of micron micron we hit early uh, amd was a bit of a laggard in the market if that even makes any sense up three and a half percent because it's it's more than the nasdaq when i say it's lagging it was lagging the other chip names is what i mean there k web on the other hand you know i still feel like i only oh goodness it's still new york uh, i still feel like i only want to be chasing shorts but i had to have that stop and we got into the trade and said, if it takes out the high of the day, I'm going to be out of K-Web. So I am out of it. I'm not going to die on that hill. If I get another opportunity to get back in, I'll go ahead and do so. But the new one for me is going to be AMD. As it's already, wow, I mean, I should already have scalped the first leg out on a breakout trade. If I'm taking a breakout trade, I'm usually looking uh, at that first, like, 50 cents. It's another quarter, 50, or dollar. In this particular case, its consolidation range was a buck. So I'm looking to take out 50 cents there. And if we get the first half... Uh, that'll be fine. And also, the 115 is the 200 period moving average on AMD. That sets up for a pretty solid target there. But it's a bit of a line in the middle of the range on the 15 minute. You're breaking out from here. There is some chance that it would go to 1819. And the only reason I'm not holding out for that, well, is two. One, because it's been relatively weak up to this point, and two, because we do still have the Fed. Uh, and I might expect that you might not have as much continuation uh, to be able to get us there. I feel like you have to hold it almost all day long to get to 118, 119. So I favor a 115 out on AMD. Look, we're never happy. Uh, yeah, AMD, I mean, wow, $7 now in the money for NVIDIA? $7, $8 now in the money for NVIDIA as that keeps on climbing? I've never been happier in my life to be stopped out of a short because Ford right now, we're about to get out of this one right here uh, as it's going to take down. We just went short it. We got out. We took another bid right here. You can see our average price is 44 Looks like we'll take a hit here on Ford if that just keeps on climbing to the upside. I'm actually going to cancel and get out a little bit. If it breaks through, 55 but like this isn't a four dollar winner now on facebook uh eight dollar winner here on nvidia and then an embarrassing out on microsoft down to the downside why we got out of that one i mean i know why we did it took down to 90 uh we weren't expecting that and it was weaker than the market but there's that there's that move up on the market that we are calling so really happy with the way this one worked out um we'll put another average in here on ford and then if this thing breaks above 16.55 uh we're just going to get out of this one so um you know wrong on this for sure but I, like I said, happy to be wrong as the market is just ripping to the upside. It sucks because normally we are long for it as well, but we're trying to play price action. And now, wow, the market just keeps on chugging along here, guys. What a great day.
Yeah, you can't complain about it. I see this B-E-K-E. -E. Uh, it is on the radar there, but obviously, you know, I'm trying to trade only a couple of these at the same time when you're looking at those Chinese names. Um, it's been pretty strong, and you just saw it take, well, I just saw it take another level. That 15, come on, load up here. Yeah, that 15 to the upside. Going to go to the high. Always, when in doubt, zoom out. And when you go to the higher time frame, if this even wants to load, come on, do it, do it, do it, do it. Uh, you see a couple of wick tops at that 15 level, and this is the level that I think you wait for when you're playing these shorts. You can look on the daily chart, it's the same thing as well. So now that it's trying to take this next leg out, this is where I would expect some bag holders to be trying to take some profit, and you can sort of dig into an opportunity to the short side of a trade on uh, BEKE. It just made a couple of battles back and forth. So there are some buyers in this range, but that is a wick top consolidation, confirm level on the daily chart. I saw people talking about it, but it's, to me, those are not interesting until they get to a price that makes some sense. And $15 makes some sense, so you do see me jump in uh, to the short there. AMD just broke 114. I want to be out before 115, so uh, another 70 or 80 cents, I think, will be uh, taking our, our out on that one as we head to Miss V to see what she has. Hey guys, let's boost the like button. We have more than 6,000 people watching and only 1,200 likes. We can do much better. So please find a second, smash the like button and back to you guys. Man, uh, yeah, so okay, so out of Ford, uh, we will flush ourselves down the toilet on that one. Uh, we tried it, man. Uh, I don't know why we went short Ford. Again, it was a little weaker than everything else, but yeah, still, off those highs. We should have just got out here when it broke 50, uh, but we got a little spicy there and, and, and waited for that uh, to keep going. The NASDAQ up another 3%, man, wow. Uh, $9 now, $9 in the money now on NVIDIA. Um, so this name just keeps on ripping up. $3 for Facebook, and we do have to get back into something. Let's check out what Apple's doing. Uh, I know Prad's loving life right now. 158 for Apple. That's gonna, that was a great buy down there at 150.50. Um, I also pulled the trigger on that one. Uh, great, great, great move up. Nvidia 114. Or sorry, uh, AMD 114. I need no one was looking at that. Yesterday, Tesla. We fought it all afternoon, man. Uh, well, not all afternoon. We got in with like the last hour on like an 800 break, uh, and it was 803 actually. And the best we got was 805. Well, today. Look at that bottom, 805 bottom, right where we were yesterday, and then a monster move to the upside to 833 and change. So Nvidia, sorry, uh, Tesla continues to take out days high there. And then by the way, like Neo, we could have turned this stock positive. And look at that trade on Neo that long. We should probably still be in this one. I mean, we should technically still be in oh, all of our longs, I feel like. Uh, but the market is just rocking and rolling here. Uh, let's go over to Brendan now on the big screen with a little small cap recap, a name that we didn't look at yet. Yeah, impressively low volume, we'll say, for uh, small caps so far today. I was going to uh, mention this AGRI past couple of days. Uh, gave you all kinds of opportunities on huge volume. Today, not so much. Uh, volume, an issue here. But uh, was looking for that similar kind of move here for AGRI and then the fade off. But uh, we'll see what happens. Still uh, room down to about 280 or uh, 275 for uh, AGRI. Back to the downside. Uh, okay. Uh, Futu was another uh, Chinese name that uh, popped up initially as being weaker than the rest. Huge flush from 34, 33 and a half, all the way down to 30, uh, working its way back up now. Very wide range, thinly traded stock, so a heads up on that. Uh, give you a quick, I chased it a bit, but give you a quick trade at the bottom there. But 33 and a half and then 34 and a half for uh, Futu, another one of the uh, Chinese names. Uh, it's worth mentioning both uh, Yihang and uh, Didi, as Neil was saying, stuck in a range, not really doing much. Uh, low volume, guys, right across the board. Got it. Oh, there we go. I want to thank you for the super chat. Worldwide imports, uh, I, I shorted AMD off the highs. Talk about that one because it couldn't break the tops. Both Micron, which I was long, and NVIDIA, which Sean was long, and everything else, broke the, broke the highs and were going even higher. So they were in the midst of a breakout. AMD couldn't do it. Triple top. So it's just a simple, like, fade off that high of the day. I do that trade all the time. Can't break out. Take the fade on the curl. Um, but once it made this consolidation, couldn't break to a lower level, and the market made another leg to the upside, I said from the beginning, I like the reversal. It's still a triple top. And if you look at the higher time frame, it's still a real, it's still a breakout on the 15 minute when it gets above that range. It was just relatively weak in the moment. The thing that was abnormal wasn't the long. We liked the long in the chips today. What was abnormal was actually taking the short. And the reason for the short was because it hadn't gone yet. But that's more a setup than anything else. Like when I take a short off the high of the day, it's not saying a stock can't go up. 
It's simply saying, I think it pull back, pulls back from here, and there is a trade in it. And there was a trade to the short side uh, on a bit of a dip. And you could have done this two or three times. I just did it the once. But that doesn't mean that I didn't think the chips were strong today. In fact, I still do. Uh, going into that Fed number, uh, BEKE, which I just got into, just to flip back over. Whoops. Did I just? No, that's right. Oh, no, it's on the New York. Of course it is. Why isn't it on the NASDAQ? Uh, that just started to roll back over. It was been battling that 15 level. I'm bidding first in front of 60s and then you know, in front of 1440s, and I'll try to be all out in front of VWAP there as that continues to fall. DD's still not going anywhere, man, so there's really not much to see. This AMD's to the long uh, and BEKE to the short. I'm looking to see if I can't find a way into Tesla, but that's, you know, it, it'll, be, it'll be my frustrating stock of the day because I was bidding down here in front of 803 and just, I canceled the bid when I saw that candle come in. I had this happen to me a couple of weeks ago. Um, you know, a big candle came in at the open on AMD on a short trade. And I said, why take a fill that way in the pre-market if you don't like it when it comes in that violently? Just wait for the open to happen. I did that move and then missed out on the long Tesla. Now Gonzo, 855 to 865. Those are the levels to the upside that I think are resistance. Still a ways away, but hey, on Fed Day, anything's possible. Yeah, and uh, I was just, remember I said NVIDIA could go up 9% today? That was when it was up 2.5%. It's now up 6%. NVIDIA's $9 now in the money and still making new highs. Um, yeah, what about 246 maybe uh, as an area? We've been up here before, uh, this 246 area. Oh, and a shout out, uh, you just, uh, thanks, thanks for the credit on this as well. Uh, not Worldwide Imports. Alan Crapo. What's up, Alan Crapo? Um, here it is right here. Uh, when to close out that Sox L swing? Now. I just said, just close it now. Why not? You have a monster win. We've talked about Sox L uh, last week, and I said, I think it was Friday. Um, I was like, just buy this thing. Uh, oops, it gets to see. There it is again. It's an Amex name. Um, just buy this ETF here. We'll keep hitting that. Hopefully, our chart will load up. You should be in the money quite nicely here uh, on Sox L if you did buy it down there. Uh, we talked about buying it here, $28, $29. You're up to $35, so that's 20% uh, in two days. So I, you know, I would think to take that, but why do that? When look at NVIDIA right now, still March, March, March to the upside. NVIDIA now at days high again. Like now I'm just sucked that we took out like two, three dollars worth of a win here. But you can't, you know, I can't predict nine dollars. And if I did, then I wouldn't be sitting here now. We would have took like 20,000 shares down here. Um, but that was a monster, monster move to the upside uh, for NVIDIA. All we can really do now is try to find out where, you know, where is a possible area that you might find some support, right? Or some resistance in this case. Like normally, if you look back here, you look up maybe right here, 241, 242, but we hit that like butter right through, uh, hot knife and butter. And then now we'll wait to see if we can make this high, 246, 247. That's gonna be the closeout for me. So we're gonna wait for that 245, 50, something like that. It's only $2 away. I mean, this is a $12 winner rate. That would be a $12 winner. It's $10 now uh, for Nvidia. So this might be something to look at. Facebook, by the way, like I'm talking about Nvidia here as a good trade. Facebook might even be better, man. This is 350, $4 now in the money on a $100, $198 name. And not only is it better, it has that bottom. Like we hit that bottom there and it just kept ripping to the upside, 199 and change. Work on Facebook, same thing. Maybe that 199 is a good out. We could dump all these and not worry about anything. That might be the play. So let's wait to see where, there it is, NVIDIA keeps on going, man. Monster, monster trade. Money, the money, money, money man is money, here money, right now. Money, NVIDIA, money, money. $11 now in the money, Brendo? He uh, moves for these chips, yeah, wow. Uh, Moderna as well, back to the upside today. Wild week for mRNA, 6% higher after about the same to the downside yesterday. Japan uh, announcing 70 million more doses going to that country for their COVID vaccine. Ooh, Moderna even catching a bit of a... You know what's a good day in the market when Moderna's up. I shouldn't say that. That's probably me. Uh, AMD, we, we took it out at the bottom of 112. I said 115 was going to be a target, but I see a, if I see a wick like this, like a parabolic move up, and it goes into the target range, it's just take it out there. You know, that's a good time to get out. When it goes that last parabolic move, I don't need it to go all the way to 115. We'll take 114 uh, and a half. So we played the 113 level short, and then we played it to the long side and be able to grab that out there. But B-E-K-E, -E, which this time I'm going to get it right. That's still that's on the New York. Look at it still go sideways here. So we have the consolidation. It's looking like it's set up 
it can go either way at this point. When you get like a bull flag like that, you know, if it breaks out, I'm stopping out. I'm not heroing it or holding out. Um, but if we break down, my targets are in on that. And DD looks like it'll be about that same story. I'm watching Micron here start to show some cracks. Uh, like it looking like it's weak. I got the reload and of course I mean to stop it. It'll be similar to what, I know what you were talking about there. I know exactly what you're talking about with softy there, Sean, because you know I got back into Micron on the dip and didn't give it enough room and then stopped out, it goes right back to the high. But it doesn't break the high. That's in the context of you know AMD finally breaking out, the futures continuing to break out, NVIDIA continuing to break out. Micron couldn't get through that high of the day. If we're, if we're testing resistance on the NASDAQ, Micron might turn into a bit of a short to me off that 79 level. And there was positive a headline uh, with regards to Ukraine and Russia making some progress. And this is what happened in CVX turning red. Uh, so that now breaking the lows and going even lower. Oil uh, looking relatively weak. But just keep in mind, in about two minutes, we do have uh, inventory numbers coming through. Yeah, that should be crazy yeah. uh, for oil. So we're 12, 13. <laughs> we were just 11. Uh, actually, oh, it actually went up to 245. So, like, I'm really debating getting out of this AMD, man. It just went, or NVIDIA, it just went right up to our targets. But, like, the market's at highs right now. We just told Brad uh, that we were along $11 in the money because uh, he had some FOMO. Yeah, he had some FOMO on the Facebook yesterday. So let's see uh, if he has it now today. There it is. What's up, Brad? What are you asking me? All right, I see. Yeah, I'm never selling. So this is what uh, you just posted in here. Uh, I'll open this up so you guys can see. This is what he did. This is that. Oops, uh, there it is right there. I'm never selling NVIDIA or AMD as we continue to go. Here we go. That's the boys on the floor right now as we motivate them. That's, gr that's Greg right here. Greg, let's go, guys. You know, let's go. Get those, get those wins. Let's go, guys. Uh, but there it is right there. Thank you for that. And, yeah, that's what we're feeling. Bang, 7%. We called this move, guys. There it is to the upside. This ain't no gift horse, man. This is a market rally right here. Uh, but, but uh, on that gift horse. I wouldn't horse, look that gift horse in the mouth. Yeah, no, and hey, man, that's what I'm saying right now. We're up monstrous right now. And look, the thing is, sometimes you have to let these breathe, and that's what we did. Like, I did the same trades as Neil, man. Got out for quick scalps, but let something breathe to the end side. This is what we're talking about. We talk about this um, with Arun. We talk about this all the time. You know, like, you can't, you got to hold on to some stuff, but at some time, there is a top. Right? There's going to be a top to this move. Like the Nasdaq's up that 3%. We've seen it fall 1% in like five minutes. So, you know, you got to be ready for this. But until the Nasdaq shows us signs of weakness, man, it's like to get out of some of these trades. Like maybe, M AM, maybe NVIDIA was a gift horse at 239, right? But then we wouldn't have 245. So you got to sort of hold on to some of these. But at the same time, man, cash out. Like if you have the opportunity and you're in the money, like we're up now probably my best day of, of, of the month uh, right here. And, you know, maybe that's an indication right there that, hey, this market's rallied huge, man. The Fed is coming, man. Jerome Powell is knocking on the door. But I think it's going to be bullish when that guy opens his mouth. So we'll wait to see. I don't want to get out of anything. The only thing I may get out of, the only stock that's hurt me today is Ford. And that could continue to hurt. So we may get out of Ford again. We reloaded the short. We're using it against this 60. But, hey, if this market keeps rallying, Ford's not going to work to the short side either brendo all right let's uh let's get some inventory data here for crude oil uh it was higher so 4.2 uh hold on let me expand that is 4.2 versus a drawdown of 1.3 oh. expected so or sorry 4.3 versus 1.3 uh so a build of 4.3 versus 1.3 for crude oil so uh watch for a move uh on crude that's a huge number for crude oil guys uh 10 30 let's get a quick check on how things in europe are shaping up miss v's watching what's going on over there what's up miss v hey brandon european markets are trading higher on china's stimulus promise bmw trading in germany is up more than three percent despite lowering its profit margin expectations for 2022 back to you uh, just watching crude back to the downside a bit here, guys. It looks like it sold off pretty hard into this, though. But uh, there we go. 4.3 versus a drawdown expected of 1.3. Yeah, interesting. We, we, we saw that move uh, come a little bit earlier, and that was on that... I guess the Russians, but not as much of a move there. Uh, this K I do see KC, guys, and a lot of people are talking about it as the market continues to run, load up. Uh, made a parabolic move up again, a 
percent to the upside. Uh, but that was dipping at the open pretty heavily. Look, this is obvious level. It's going to be here at about five dollars and fifty cents. Six bucks on your fifteen minutes going to stand out. Both those, I think, uh, should be pretty big uh, opportunities to make a bit of a play there. Kingsoft Cloud. I'm going to double check. I want to make sure I haven't traded yet, so I want to see things like the float uh, before I jump into this name. But a new one here um, on the move, up sixty-five percent in churning. All right, um, Ford, we just took a piece out there for, for one cent loss. We took out uh, 25%. We're still going to hold out for a little bit lower. Did it just touch 50 there? Um, but uh, we'll see. If we can get a 50, you know what? If we can get a 50 bid, uh, let's do that on Ford. We'll take a little bit out on 50. I mean, I don't know if this, what, what this stock wants to do. Uh, I do have a bid down here at 45. That's for the real amount of shares. But we'll just see if we can take a little bit out. Hopefully I can, like not hopefully, I'll still be in it, but hopefully we'll be able to have 70% still left when we get down here to 45. So that's my idea. Well, you know, we'll take that. Um, yeah, we talked about gift horses, but NVIDIA still keeps moving, man. But there's that 246. Like, this is an area of concern right now for me because we talked about how high it's been going to the upside right now. Hey, it's a $12 winner on board right now for NVIDIA. So um, all happy with that one, but uh, I don't know, man. This is... I, I don't, don't want to get out like five like we just talked about what am I supposed to say obviously speechless we just had Facebook we talked about that that was four dollars in the money now it's five dollars in the money uh, Facebook long so I mean look at this one just do 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 like where do I get out like where is this proverbial gift horse like I don't know two, this is a monster move um, pair some out if you still have some on guys I'm holding this all the way up man as long as the net just keeps on climbing like it's doing then we're going to stay into these maybe like a 200 break on Facebook but hey the Nasdaq's pumping we're just jumping and we're going to hold on to everything. This is a such a monster day here today in the market. We had a monster day yesterday and honestly, man, getting out of that Microsoft has hurt uh, a lot. Not, I mean, it didn't hurt. It hurt the net, but it more just hurt like, oh, I can't believe we got out of that one. Uh, we know we love Softy and now it's at its stays high as well. Um, really, the only concern for me is face is uh, Ford. Uh, everything else is fine. Ford to the sell side. If we get a fit, I mean, I'm saying this is a concern and we're out of the money one cent. Uh, hopefully this comes back down uh, uh, right now into 1650 we'll take a piece and then 1645 but oh man I don't know let me know if you what you guys think I should do with this Nvidia trade it's $12 in the money yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm looking for the, the new opportunities up here. And uh, one that I didn't like, I, I'm starting to like it now because it's up 14%, is uh, a shorting a firm. A uh, firm is close to 33 bucks, and that's the line. I didn't think we'd actually get there, so I didn't even bother mentioning this. Um, but this 32 and a half, and I'm going back to last week, and this is a thing, right? Like, go back to last week. You're at yeah, last week's support levels. The firm isn't even anywhere close to its high. So it's a big move up 14%. But remember, the more you're down... You know, the more impressive some of these relief rallies will look for some of these beaten up names. Gets to that 32 and a half, I'm going to be involved in it. You guys just mentioned that. Well, you guys mentioned KC. Uh, I went over and, and uh, look at the levels. I like the 550. I like the 6 even. Got the locates here. If it tries to make another move at the high, I didn't catch the 540 when it got there the first time. I will take it a second time. I still have BEKE, and it looks like a pretty good one. And then I was also mentioning to you guys Micron was having some trouble breaking through the high. Finally got there now. I, I got in and out of it already, and then the second time should have held on. But, yeah, some weakness starting to come into this name in particular. I mean, I understand uh, it's up 8%, but uh, so in particular because it couldn't get through those highs. But the, f but the short of firm just feels a little bit more safe as it's going parabolic than trying to jump into a micron short. So I'm going to stick with what has usually been working, and that's finding a good fade level. You show me a chart like this on a firm, and I'm usually going to look for a short. Yeah, for sure. I'd be shorting. I mean, we were talking about shorting a firm since 140. Uh, but yeah, that's, I mean, all these names, man. Square, PayPal, Affirm. Uh, it just keeps going on and on. PaySafe. Uh, it, it just goes on and on. We're going to get out of NVIDIA here if it takes out this 244.50. So we'll ring the register for 10 bucks clean uh, on this one if it does take it down. I just, I don't, you know, the NASDAQ, I just don't want to take a risk that this falls. And then we, we you know, take the, the trade and we you know, let it fall down even a couple more bucks here, maybe into 243. You know what? Let's just wait a little bit. We're so we're so hard in the money now. Um, if it does fall down, maybe this 243 area uh, level of concern there. But I mean, it would give up three bucks to the upside. Here it is starting to break down a little bit. Uh, Nvidia, but again, 
uh, the NASDAQ is still hanging out a little bit. So let's wait to see. Uh, maybe that was just a little bit of a dip. We, I, I just canceled the order or we'd be out. So maybe that is the right play. Yesterday we got out of Alibaba before it tanked. Maybe this is a good charm uh, to get out of NVIDIA right now. Facebook, we still got that one. So, um, you know, maybe, maybe uh, Facebook is the one to hold. But is NVIDIA the one to hold? Who knows? We're still bouncing around. Still 11 bucks in the money. We did get our Ford, though. We got our Ford 50 right there. So uh, not the F-150, Randy, but just the Ford 50. We'll wait to see if it comes back down into 16 F-150. Uh, we'll see if we can get that 1645 on Ford, guys. Brendo. Was it not Brendan? Was it Brendan? We, we weren't planning to, but uh, sure, let's talk about Starbucks, guys, because uh, speaking of China exposure, I was just having a look at uh, Starbucks having a nice day as well, up 8%. Uh, remember JP Morgan with the upgrade as well, and the CEO retirement today for uh, SBOX. All right. We I, I actually still have my, go ahead. I was going to say, I still have my bid that never got filled in front of 87. So Starbucks did go up to 90. It just uh, didn't take me with it because I didn't get the fill. But yeah, strong move there. It can't break out. On the news, it got to 90 and then reversed. So the fact that it wants to reverse here at 90 uh, doesn't surprise me. I'm now into a firm. I'm, I'm lucky to still want more shares. I got 32 30s in front of the 50 level. And then 33 uh, was the big level on the 15 minute chart. Uh, so I'll probably have it at least two times. Uh, but first leg in on a firm here. Uh, just had to fade him in. I almost have to uh, when I see it. But this BKE. I wasn't looking for, I'm, you know, I still don't love the notion of a breakout, but how long is this going to go sideways? Something up 65%. And then another big move up here, like two blocks off the open. Usually you don't see it consolidate for this long. It picks a direction at this point. It almost feels like it has to break the high, shake some people out, and then go. So I will be looking for that play. If it shakes me out on a high break and then slams back down, I'll try and get right back into the trade at 15 even and take another swing at it. All right, there it is. We finally made that call and we got out. Uh, we got out of our NVIDIA trade right there um, at 245. Uh, what was the price exactly? We just tweeted out 245.50, 244.59. 244.59, save ourselves a dollar from where it's at right now. Um, and again, we were watching the NASDAQ like a hawk. You guys saw that. Um, we were watching this thing very, very carefully. Um, as soon as it started to sort of give up a little bit here, it did the same thing here, but you know, that was one candle followed by stair steps, right? This was one candle, two candles. I was waiting for this bounce right there. The minute we took out this level, uh, I guess this is about as much as I can zoom in right now. Zoom in, we took out that, this little level. I mean, it could rip back up. Just telling you what my reasons were. As soon as we took out that candle right there, then it started to move to the downside. That's when we just honestly offer, enter, and got out of NVIDIA. Whether or not it's the right call or not, I don't know. But uh, you can get out right now at the same price if you wanted to as it comes right back. The benefit of getting out of the NVIDIA trade is now I can just go, let's go, Facebook. Sit on the diamond hands now. $6 in the money on the Facebook call. And again, you know, we have all of these. We talked about these in the pre-market. Join us every single day at 830 where we'll give you some hot fire. And that's what that trade is. Big time wins today. The trade of the day is going to be a fun one. No idea what it's going to be, but monster winners on both sides here, guys. Yeah, it's been a fun. Look, you knew it's going to be fun. Fed day is always good, but it hasn't always been. Like, remember, we're now in a raising rate environment. A lot of you probably think about, yeah, but you never get any action out of the Fed. Maybe get some talk, but rates aren't going anywhere. This is going to be different. I feel like we're going to get this multiple times this year. We are expecting that it could be as many as six hikes, uh, so you will get multiple chances uh, for this kind of play. Do I think we get a surprise? Nah, but you don't have to. Someone asked, why am I short a firm? Because it's up 15%. Uh, because it's at a nice resistance area, at least it was, uh, going back into Friday. So I look at these Friday, I've been looking at these Friday levels, and if, you, if, you're, if you're really just coming back to afternoon resistance on Friday, you know, how much have you really gone, and is it too much? So I like that 33 level. That's right here uh, at about 12 o'clock or noon. You saw it roll over from that price range. When we got into it, uh, when it got to close to this price, I said, let's engage. It's made another push at this 30, 33. I'm not adding to it just yet. I want to be patient. We're at that time of the day where sometimes you get these rollovers on those high-flying names. And speaking of high-flying names, what better way to see what is and isn't high-flying by going to Brendan for Sector Watch? Hey guys, yeah, nicely positive, obviously, right across the board here. Let's figure out why. 1.8 right now for the S&P. A lot of names on this board jumping off that were on the watch list this morning, including uh, there's all the chip makers, semiconductors leading in the tech group here. AMD, Micron, NVIDIA, QCOM is here as well. All between 3.5 and, 
and seven and a half percent in positive territory. So a huge day outside of uh, Norton Life Lock there, and Lock to the downside, 10 percent. I mean, the uh, the rest of this group outside of Oracle there as well to the downside. The rest of that group, though, very, very strong. Banks also benefiting today. So a nice bounce back for banks right across the board. Nothing individual uh, to mention here, but 8% for some of the individual banks back in positive territory. I uh, talked about LVS there uh, right out of the gate after the open. 9% uh, move for LVS today when Starbucks was on the watch list. 8% for Starbucks back to the upside. So a great day. Uh, the consumer discretionary group, though, every single name here in positive territory and then some for consumer discretionary stocks. Bottom corner over here, utility stocks are offsetting. Uh, consumer staple stocks back to the downside. And uh, very, very small today is the energy group, even with a bit of a slide off there into that inventories number for crude oil. Uh, some of the energy stocks remain little changed on the day. I, would, I was expecting that to be a little bit more negative. Material stocks, though, we saw negative yesterday on some metal prices moving back lower, back to the upside even for that group today. Uh, defense names as well, if you're looking for some negativity, all of them back to the downside on hopefully what is some positive momentum here for the uh, Russia-Ukraine situation. 1.6, guys, for the S&P. Back over to you. The award for the most needlessly long, let spike that one off, well, for the most needlessly long uh, consolidation goes to BEKE. It finally rolls over. There was no way it was going to hang out here forever, obviously, but it finally rolls over. I just took some out 1460s, next like 1440, uh, and then I'll get the rest out in front of VWAP. So it's just a reversal play. I get it. It's strong. It's up 60%, uh, but you saw a wick top. Uh, near a high, which I thought was a pretty significant high in the higher time frame, and that's all that mattered to me. This is the level we're talking about. Last week's resistance, uh, today's uh, as well there, guys. So I'm uh, going to get that next bit out here, and why am I even waiting for an extra couple of cents? I'm just going to get that next leg right here right now because it's starting to consolidate uh, five cents above where I was bidding. So VWAP will be next for me, and then we're in and out of BEKE like a bit of a bandit, uh, and then we'll move on to the next trade, which will be trying to find a place to add to this affirm trade. Feeling like Superman today, guys. Look at that NVIDIA out. Basically the high of the day. Like, we take the bottom. I mean, we have the bottom print and the high print today on NVIDIA. So that was a good trade as we're trying to go back down to view up. I'm not reloading anything at all, to be honest with you. Um, you know, again, Microsoft's a little bit embarrassing. We did have Neo to the top side. It just took that out. We should have been on Baba long. We actually, Baba's one of the more embarrassing ones because we actually wrote down here by 87s. Like it's right here on the sticky note today. And again, thank you for all the love uh, on the chat today and everything. A lot of people loving that uh, thing I did at the gas station as well. Uh, this morning. That was just a quick little video uh, for you guys. But here's Baba. Look, we went long yesterday, 75. Buy the dips into, into 87. They look good. Buy the dips into 87 here on the sticky note. So let's just, let's just have a look at the sticky note because, hey, maybe Baba didn't go to 87. Yeah, the bottom was 87. So there it is right there. We pick 87 out of thin air. It holds and we don't have long. That's the problem. I was actually bidding 87.30. We would have had this long, but it was just coming in. And then we had NEO. And the only name that we're red on today is NEO. And it's because we were defending these longs, which again, just like Baba was right. It's just, you know, you got to, trading is a, a lot of the time about your time frame. And you got to pick the right levels, but then you got to think, okay, where am I getting out when I'm wrong? How long can I hold this? Do I have the right risk on board? And unfortunately, I was too much into NEO after one, two, three averages uh -oh. in, too, too far, too fast. But why we did do the Gronk spike there uh, was because, look at this, man. Not only did we get 45s on Ford, we also got 40s on Ford, all the way to, back down in here to VWAP. So we are less than half. Uh, of in this position still as we emptied it all out down here for the nice winner for us again that was a negative name for us on the board now look we, it still needs to come back down we should have emptied it all and then it wouldn't be a problem but right now ford i'd like to get the short again up here if it can rip up but i'll try to hold on to this see if we can get these bottoms again our first short was at 32 we cashed out some at 30 let's see if we can get 30s again no more bids on ford until then and then just quickly here microsoft why do i have a 220 bid on microsoft so that's obviously 
obviously a mistake because that should have probably been 280 or something. 220. Uh, yeah, that's what I was saying. What was I doing with that? Uh, that's not going to fill. <laughs> I bet you it was down. I bet you that oh, was I know a it. I know. I think it was probably this 290 it. bid uh, was probably what it was. Uh, but anyways, uh, there we go. 290. Probably put the wrong price. Uh, we're going to wait to see. It did just take out VWAP uh, to the downside and resisted. But I don't know. We're going to wait to see, man. I don't know what we want to be on Microsoft as it is less than the market. So if we're going to reload anything, it should be on something that's stronger uh, than the market. Some people talking about our mics. Yeah, we have brand new mics on here that they're are like larger. double or triple the size there. So they're pulling it's up. like wearing like a gold chain, though. Not really. Yeah, it's two not, chains. It's not that heavy. But uh, yeah, they're, they're good. I mean, hopefully you guys like sound Yeah, that's quality. the whole point. Yeah. Uh, look, the shorts that I'm in are starting to roll over a bit, so I'm not going to – I don't want to celebrate too much uh, because it looks like there was, a, there was an earthquake in Japan that hit pretty serious and a, and a tsunami warning. It hasn't really shocked the markets, but – you know, overall, it's worth, uh, worth keeping an eye on. Thank you. Some people in the chat were mentioning, uh, talking about that. Yeah, we, we do see that. It's not to say that it will necessarily move the market, but uh, always good to know what is going on. I never, I got BK. I showed you that one reversing. That KC, on the other hand, I did not get into it. It made this nice, beautiful spike back into 550, which is, that's the wick top you're looking for into that level. It's now pulled back into a consolidation. I didn't get it on that spike. Maybe it'll do it a third time. We'll get really, really lucky that it wants to give us uh, that next leg. I was on the bid and missed a firm by about five cents, and I really don't want to move it. I'm sitting in front of 31.75 to get the first out and then see if I can't get it back to 31 even. Uh, and Didi, you know what? Whatever, man. Like, Didi is ridiculous. I actually, I did add back in at, like, 54. Uh, and I'm wondering why I even bothered to do that. It is still going sideways. What an absolute waste of time uh, Didi has been. I've been... I don't understand how something up 41% is only going to go sideways, yet somehow DD is managing to do it. It's pretty ridiculous when you think about it. Uh, BKE did not quite get to VWAP for me. So we got our first two legs out. That, that reversal, very similar to that KC trade, is already starting to pull back in. Um, but it does feel like it's almost inevitable. And the way things are going now, I'm actually going to go ahead and cancel my bid. And the reason is... The way that this has now come back down, it broke this last consolidation, but didn't fill me. So there's no need to just be sitting in front of this level. If it wants to hold up a VWAP, I can just throw a bit in there when it slows down between 10s and 20s. And this gives me an opportunity that if it goes even harder to the downside, breaking VWAP, I can just get out. Uh, you know, sorry, just get out even lower. So give it a chance to maybe go, give a little bit more than I was anticipating uh, on BEKE now that we've got near that high of the day. Okay, yeah, B-E-K-E, -E, a new name there. Uh, well, I haven't traded in a while. Neil's been on it today. Uh, AMC's at VWAP. Okay, that's a good one. Um, all right, I'm going to look at Roblox right here. What if we take down this 41? That could be a big level there uh, on Roblox. So we're going to look to see about that one. Uh, you know, I like Roblox. I think it's a good investment at these levels for sure. But maybe a little too far too fast here, up 10% on RBLX. So we'll see if that's going to hold. I do like the short through 41. We are willing to take that. Uh, and I'm not going to short this break uh, that's for sure if it takes out the high great it takes out the high I'm just looking to see if we can get something retracing just a little bit uh, to the downside here so in case this market falls just like Neil's trying to catch that affirm I think you know a weaker name here Roblox it's been pretty bad the last couple of days obviously today is a beautiful move up for Roblox um, but that's the true wait wait a minute where's my daily chart is it gone here yeah I think my daily chart is closed uh, as you can see here let me see if we can even can we get a reload on this chart as well that was my trick right you go over to the chart and you hit enter uh and then it changes that but obviously it's not changing here so we don't have any love for roblox it's like turn it off and on right yeah, yeah, exactly. Log out, log in uh, here is, is a very famous fix uh, around here. But uh, $41, that's the, that's the bottom right there. So we did have some consolidation uh, in that. But again, I'm going to cancel this right now until I get my daily chart up uh, for Roblox. But it is moving to the upside now, so that's going to be a good trade. NVIDIA, I guess, is a good reload down here at 241, especially if you do believe in the market move back up to the upside. Maybe you can get another run to 246. We're pretty happy with our NVIDIA trade today. We're at the highest spot we've been at all day. Um, we did take another piece out uh, right here at 46 on Ford, though. And now I'm waiting. Uh, that's all the way up to 40 now? Ugh. I was waiting for 32 is where my bid's at. So we'll see if that can come through on Ford. But there goes Facebook right back to today's high again. So these Facebook bottoms of 199.70 look pretty juicy as well. But it's uh, Brendo at the big screen with Happening Now. Money Talks. Money Talks.
one of those. Uh, let's talk currencies, guys. Uh, moving around again today for the U.S. dollar here, back to the downside. So there's uh, China, more stimulus, uh, regulatory changes. Uh, there's also uh, positive momentum, guys, in the, uh, it would appear anyways. A lot of people circulating a report suggesting that uh, Russia and Ukraine are in the works of a multi-point plan uh, in a way to move forward. So uh, the U.S. dollar back to the downside in a big way, almost 0.6% right now, 98 and a half. Uh, for the DXY. So everything positive here, the uh, Canadian dollar included. 78 and a half cents uh, to the US dollar for the CAD. British pound 0.4 back to the upside. Uh, I want to mention Bitcoin here, 40,000, almost got to 41,000 this morning. So uh, I was in that uh, consolidation for quite some time. Finally, it would appear anyways, breaking back to the upside, guys. Bitcoin not really... You get this nice relief rally, and it's not really moving. I know it's fed today, and I guess... 48, it, yeah, 40,800, yeah. It's, it's been back and forth off this 40,000 level. You think if you hold that as support and the market gets going, then, you know, something like that or, might make a bit of a rally. It is what it is at this point. Uh, a firm, we got, like I said, I, I had that first bit that I didn't move in front of 31 and a quarter. Uh, just going out to the 15 minutes so you can see this a little bit more in perspective. That also coincides with, if I'm shorting off this level from Friday... That's 33. Then that next consolidation was right around the bottom of 3175. So that's why I get out there. And you'll see my next bid is right around where those lows were, uh, were in front of 31 and VWAP. So hopefully we can be able to get that one as uh, in the market tries to come back in. But, you know, this is more about a firm just going too far. It was up 15% almost. Now, still up 12%. But, you know, that retracement trade is what's next. At this point, you're either holding on the longs, you're taking profits, you're looking for that next leg. I'm, I would anticipate, with only about five minutes to go, that I might not add anything at, at this point. And you want to be, you know, bag your profit. If you've got something that's really deep in the money, you can hang on to it, have a plan. Just understand that at 2 o'clock, everything can get thrown out the window. Um, with a, even, if nothing ha even if it's as expected, everything uh, can get thrown out the window technically um, when all of a sudden, you know, Powell's going to be answering questions and, and, and giving comments. Uh, and on top of that, you're going to get the actual move. I know we know what we're expecting, but... You know, things can still get thrown upside down in the futures. Uh, so you take your profit where it lies. You know, look for reloads at really good prices and don't try to force uh, any trades at this point. I'll just be happy if DD actually decides to move at some point because everything else has been, I'm not down on DD, but everything has been so good. It hasn't moved. A stock up 41%. I was thinking DD was going to be one of the wildest names in the market today, and it is probably the most boring. Uh, I'm just telling you, uh, Marissa's asking me if she makes a braised chicken again, yes. do I want um, bone in or bone out? Yeah. In. I, that's, that's what I was telling you. I says, um, it was great last time. If it says bone in, you get the flavor yeah. uh, with the bone. Come on. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I'm just All day. basically, yeah. if it says bone in, then let's roll. There we go. Uh, okay, uh, so there it is right there. Yeah, that, that, this is how I'm rolling, guys. Uh, okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll go to the bottom. It's a beer-braised chicken. I think it's Guinness, too, actually, uh, Brendo, on that one. So, um, or, or it's a red. I can't remember what it was last time. But, okay, uh, Facebook taking out days high. A nice move here, set $6 in the money. I did look at that Roblox trade, and actually, I don't mind it if it does take that bottom down. So, uh, here we go. We're going to get into a short right now. There it is. So, we're now short Roblox. Wow. Uh, right on cue uh, there, the Roblox short so we'll go short roblox right now we're short at 4105 um i don't know i don't know that probably wasn't a great fill but uh, we are short there on that number we tried to get 4110 so we'll take an 05 on roblox um we're gonna hold this until it takes out 42 that's it if it takes out 42 we'll get out of roblox but i do like that one i may i am noticing that wick right there 4160 i think that's an area to possibly get out as well um so i'll I'll look at that uh, to get out again. I don't want to, this is the thing, and I know some of you do this as well, and maybe it's a good thing to do, maybe it's not, but it's like we've had such a monster day that I'd feel peed off if I lost a decent amount of this day on the short, right? And so um, I've been calling this big, this big bid here today. It's come through, but I do like Roblox here. It's failed at the top. We'll try a little bit of a dip down here. If it fails, then fine. But our target out is really back down here to VWAP, which isn't that far. It's like 80 cents. So I'd rather like not lose 80 cents on the high side if my target's only going to be 80 cents. So uh, let's Let's look at this 4160 as an area of concern for RBLX. I have no idea who I heard, so we're just going to throw it. 
Uh, we'll, we'll team up on this one then. How about that? Uh, there are a few interesting names, guys, for uh, earnings. Uh, not in earnings season anymore, obviously, but uh, here's what's coming tonight and tomorrow morning. Didn't do this uh, yesterday. Yeah, okay, fine. I mean, uh, like HUD, HUD 8, I guess some people are going to be interested in, but you know, we're going to really fall in crypto prices more. But Dollar General, maybe? Canadian Solar, I guess, could have some moves in oh, there. Oh, I like William Sonoma, actually, WSM. I, I've yeah. talked about well, that. Well, I like them in general. but Yeah, yeah. I mean, great, high-quality stuff. Um, as people obviously get back into um, – oh, that's right. I don't have the daily chart up. Uh, hold on a second. Let me just call this up one more time. But anyways, William Sonoma, I, you know, they've, they've talked about it on their last call. Wow, Facebook is just rip city right now. Guys, $6 now in the money. That's Tesla. Uh, we need William Sonoma. They talked about supply chain issues last time. Obviously, they're a very, very high-end – I mean, not very, very. I don't know if it's very, very, but they're a high-end furniture store uh, coming in. I love them. I mean, we, we have a few pieces from William Sonoma, but again, that bottom of 130, I think that's probably the bottom. We'll see. They're not too bad. They're at 151. Let's see if William Sonoma can get up to 165. I mean, again, they're going to talk in inflation, pricing, things like that. But I do like William Sonoma here as Roblox goes into the money right now. So let's go over to Ms. V and find out what day it is. Hey guys, what a great start of the day and many more to come. So please join Prad and me right after for more. Don't leave without liking this video and happy National Panda Day, everyone. Well, that's better than yesterday was National Kansas Day. Huh? So, so I shut it out to Jayhawks. Well, like the, the state? Yeah, I shut it out Jayhawks and Sunflowers. So that was a really good uh, day yesterday. And Panda Day, shout out to pandas, man. Um, we watched that Turning Red, a fantastic movie. I think your daughter would like that. Based in Canada? Based in Toronto. Toronto, Toronto. It, yeah, it Toronto, has the Sky Toronto. Dome. It talks about Sky Dome. It yes. has the old Sky Dome logo in it. It's based in 2002. Yes, Prad. He just said Pratt Toronto relax. like five times, Pratt, bro. you're on in two minutes, bro. Chill out, okay? Um, okay, so uh, right there, it's filmed in Toronto. I love you, Pratt. Uh, yeah, it's fil not filmed in Toronto. It's a cartoon. Uh, but anyways, based, based in, Toronto, in Toronto and an absolutely fantastic movie. And that's Red Panda. So that's what goes on in that movie. I mean, that's not a spoiler alert. Uh, turning Red, Red Panda. But, uh, oh, did you ever see the pandas at the Toronto Zoo? Uh, you know, we were actually, so I was up at my in-laws, we were talking about, be, uh, talking about the zoo. Yeah. So I hadn't been in years, but they're I love them. They're not there anymore. Uh, no, I, I, back in the day I saw them, but I'm, oh, I'm looking to get back, man. these cute tigers. If she likes tigers, there's these awesome, they just had babies. There's oh my God. awesome tigers in the Toronto Zoo right now. I can't wait to get back and do stuff, man. So Toronto Zoo's on my radar. You said it was National Kansas Day. I'm yesterday, just going to, yeah. I'm going to throw this one out there. It was yesterday, it was National Kansas Day. Um, yeah, people say, you might say go Jayhawks. Yep. I think they're going to disappoint. Just don't, don't put them too far in your bracket. They're a good I team. I haven't even looked at a bracket. Uh, they're a good anything. team, but I, I think they might disappoint you a little bit. Uh, but a sleeper, you want a sleeper? Uh, like Virginia Tech could be interesting. Uh, but Gonzaga, this is their year, man. I know, yeah, I mean, I know last they, year they I know every year every day people say Gonzaga is the best team. Like they should win. Year, yeah. Like last year, this year Gonzaga actually wins. It's going to happen for them. Okay, well, good Believe for yeah, – I mean, I – you know, again, um, NCAA, the, one of the best times. You can look at DraftKings. I'm sure Trader Pratt will be all over DraftKings as well uh, today as that, that stock's moving. I mean, Aunt Kathy today should be happy. Most of her ARC, let's go to ARC KK here. So I'm going to go to ARC KQ. Uh, our KK, let's go, to, let's go to the flagship anyways. Let's see, that was up 6% or so earlier. What is it up right now? 8% uh, for <laughs> ARC today. So uh, obviously some of those names, we've talked about them on the show today. Palantir's up, Roku's up. Uh, they're all up, man. Roblox up that 9%. Everybody's up, up and away. We did take a piece out there um, on that, uh, down to 90s we got uh, on Roblox. But again, we are holding this. It looks like the market does, uh, does not want to go down. It's bounced off this 50 period now. Looks like we're going to start to head back up to the upside. So watch out uh, for any of your shorts. And wow, Facebook, man. Now 201. We're long at 195 on Facebook, man. This name just continues to go. Check back on our NVIDIA. That's still down here at 242. That could be a reload spot as well. But hey, man, what a great day. It's good to have Neil back. And we're both back at 2 p.m., of course. Yeah, it's going to be wild. Of course, we got Fed quarter point hike coming at 2. But for now, going to Trader Pratt and Miss V. Go get them. Welcome to the Fed Day. It is Wednesday, March 16th. Time for Miss V and Trader Pratt. That's right, guys. Welcome back, everyone. What an exciting day. I hope you're all doing great so far. Please, as usual, be active on the chat. Ask us anything. And go long on the like button as markets are reaping today. Indeed, yeah. 